Nashville, Tennessee, a city filled with storytellers and dreamers, entertainers honing their craft, just like the stars on the track tonight in front of a sold-out crowd here at Nashville Super Speedway. I was gonna slide you guys in it's NASCAR Cup Series Racing, the Ally 400. Great crowd on hand alongside our crew chief, Steve Letart, Rick Allen with you. And Steve, you see the grandstands filled, Nashville. This has become a huge event. Yeah, well, Nashville Speedway and Nashville City, they're both entertainment meccas. The downtown is unbelievably packed each and every night, and the fans have moved out here for the Speedway. It's going to be a great race under the lights. Which driver has caught your attention tonight? Well, I think the number nine. I think Chase Sally's been out of the car due to injury. For that reason, he's way down in the point standings. He needs points to try to make the playoffs, but a win is a guarantee. I'm thinking the nine of Chase Elliott, he won here last year. Can he repeat and lock himself into the playoffs? I think the 22 of Joey Logano, the defending Cup Series champion, has a win already, but there's only two wins for Ford this year. I think he's trying to get those Fords back in victory lane. Can he do it here at Nashville? Well, you talk about the Fords. How about the Toyotas? It's been a great week for 23-11. You talk about big stars. There's no bigger star than their team owner, right? Michael Jordan has been around all weekend long. Bubba was so close for getting that win at Talladega in front of MJ. Could tonight be the night they take MJ to victory lane in person? Yeah, and Tyler Reddick, his teammate, starts in the front row right next to Ross Chastain who has been the topic of conversation all weekend for more on Ross let's go to our drivers Mayor Jeff Burton and Hall of Famer Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah it's just first off great to be back at the racetrack back on NBC the sights the smells the sounds only you can get at a NASCAR race Jeff I'm glad to be doing this job again the drivers are out on the racetrack. They're going through the final sort of checklist inside of that race car. It's been warm this weekend, a little humid tonight. They're making sure those cool suits are working, that helmet fans working. They're also checking with their spotter, making sure they hear their spotter all the way around the racetrack. Yeah, let's go down, watch them on pit road. Look at what they're seeing. What they're doing right here is they're trying to find their pit box. Number one goal, find your pit box. Where do I have to stop? Don't overshoot it. That's why they, one of the reasons they come down pit road every week. Also checking pit road speed got to make sure that they're pushing that to the limit. The crew chief's giving them the speed they're running. They don't have a mile per hour. they got a tachometer inside the car, so they use that tack, and the crew chief tells them, too fast, slow it down. You can be more aggressive. It's critical to push as hard as you can all night during these pit stops. Now you mentioned the excitement about being down here. I'm going to tell you one guy that always creates excitement. That's our pole center, Ross Chastain. That guy is on it. But this year, his car owner had to come out and say, look, you got to clean some things up. And he did it publicly, and since then, hadn't been as good. Performance hadn't been as good. But tonight, he's got a fast race car, was fast in practice, sat on the pole. Tonight, we're going to see Ross Chastain be Ross Chastain, go out and try to win this race and not care if he makes somebody mad. Another guy who's fast here but has been fast for the last several weeks, Martin Truex, and Kim has more. That's right. Lots of momentum for the 19 team of Martin Truex Jr. In fact, they told me they are still riding a wave of confidence from their win two weeks ago at Sonoma. Fast in practice. Right. In fact, top three speed in practice. They swept both stages here last year. We'll see what they can do, Dave, from the sixth starting position. Kim, what a year it's been for Kyle Busch. Three wins. He's in the playoffs, but he wants that regular season championship. A win here tonight at Nashville, well, he hasn't been great so far, would go a long way toward that. Marty Snyder. Dave, so far this year, the best driver in the Cup Series has been William Byron. He is the championship leader. But a moment ago, he admitted to me lately, we just haven't had that same speed. On the top end, a third-place car. On the bottom end, a seventh-place car. And, Rick, he said, we have some work to do this summer, which has traditionally been a very tough time of the season for the 24. Interesting, Marty, that they've got work to do. Three wins already. Want to take a look at tonight's starting grid brought to you by ally up front Ross Chastain first career cup pull for both him and his team owner track house yeah, you saw Daniel Suarez to the back of the field in a backup car uh, Kyle Busch right there on the second page Christopher Bell his teammate will be in row 11 a little bit further back in the field Harrison Burton Brennan Poole making one of his few starts here in the cup series field two by two 
going down the back stretch and Steve it's been a warm weekend on this concrete surface are we going to see slipping and sliding like we saw in the Xfinity series yesterday well it's really been chaos we've saw accidents at qualifying both in cup and Xfinity the Xfinity series race it took us three or four times to get the race started without an accident that has to be on the mind of these drivers as they're coming around it is a night race the lights will come on but right now you see it the sun is shining the track is slick how aggressive will they be early and we'll see how much the track changes. The shadows just starting to creep over the front stretch. Pace car has made its way off the racetrack onto pit road. Now the field in the hands of Ross Chastain. The Ally 400 is underway. This racetrack historically has been really wide, a lot of grooves, but yesterday in practice it was kind of one groove on the bottom, so all the drivers trying to figure out where they can go. A lot of accidents. You see cars moving around, sliding around. A tough Xfinity race yesterday. These drivers have to be taking it pretty easy, making sure they understand how much grip this racetrack has. Two. Side drafting down the back straightaway. Haley's going to decide to get in line. Good smart move early in the race. Truex to the bottom, side by side with Byron. Byron to the top of Haley. Almost three wide off a of turn four. Haley struggling a little bit with the handling of his car. Really good qualifying run. Thought he had good pace and practice yesterday. But two almost contact Haley trying to keep this spot side by side racing neck and neck into turn three Haley backs off gives up the position Truex really fast in practice now here comes Byron to the inside see right here they're lined up they all see Justin's having a problem with this car that means go on offense It's a good run on corner exit. Not enough to get by him, though. Like the whole field sort of single file. A little bit of side by side here and there. Some people already trying this middle groove. We saw this track last year and in the Xfinity race really wide. Already cars up there trying to find speed, clean air as well. We see the 17 of Chris Busher making his way up. The nine, as you mentioned, Steve. Maybe a little more pressure on Chase Elliott as there's just 10 opportunities until the playoffs get underway. And he may have to win his way to get into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, the math is there that says he can get in on points, but a win is a guarantee. Bubba Wallace just in front of Chase Elliott making his 200th start in the Cup Series here in Nashville. His co-owner, Denny Hamlin, to his outside. Toyota has been very good here at Nashville Super Speedway. This is just the third race for the Cup Series here on this surface. Great battle down the back straightaway. Bubba Wallace racing his car owner. Always a precarious situation to be in, Jeff, when you got to race your car owner on the racetrack. Yeah, I feel like what's happened here, though, is Denny's encouraged them to race him hard. Be smart, but race him hard. Get the most you can. You see Denny, little crossover move, trying to get back underneath. makes it harder to get the car to do what you want it to do. That fight for position continues as Hamlin has the shorter distance around the track next to the yellow line, but things tightening up up front. Chastain has Reddick now all over his back bumper. Though. Chastain to the top, trying to take air away from that 45 car. Reddick. Chastain not ready to go all the way up there, though. Just testing out that middle groove. He's going to get more and more aggressive. 
more and more comfortable going to the top, Marty. Well, Junior, you went to the garage area this morning, and everyone said these two cars were the best in the field, Ross Chastain and Tyler Reddick. Reddick very good on the long runs. Chastain looked good yesterday, but just told his crew chief, Phil Surgeon, a moment ago, I'm a three out of five tight. Steve, if you get that message just early in the race, what are you thinking? Well, you're definitely concerned, and from all the crew chiefs I've talked to, tight is the wrong side to be on. The way these cars adjust, it's much easier to tighten a car up that's too free. When, the, when you're tight, the front tires don't seem to work, and what you want to do for chassis adjustments hurts the aero balance. So you kind of contradict one another, Dave. Back to sixth place now is Justin Haley after his best qualifying effort of his career and of the season in the 31 car. It's unfamiliar territory for him for 2023. His best qualifying had been 16th. So what's wrong with the car? Well, just tight on landing. Steve, you just talked about a tight, wrong place to be. He waited until lap eight, then he keyed the radio and told his crew tight on landing. The concern, though, is which way is the track going to go? You see right now the 31 shade on the front stretch. Now down here in one and two. More sunshine on the racetrack. As that sun sets, the track should free up, in my opinion. As it cools, the front normally gains grip. William Byron, what a year. Yeah. What a year for William Byron. We're seeing, I think, a breakout year for the driver of the 24. Big run on the outside as he tries to complete the pass on Joey Logano. Using that higher line, Logano falls back to fifth. Byron up to fourth now. The gap between Chastain and Reddick. Still two tenths of a second. You see that on the top of your screen. Tyler Reddick searching for any clean air and a way around that one of Chastain. If you can believe it, Ross Chastain leading. He's the only driver inside the top five without a win this season, which is really shocking. When you look at Chastain's numbers, stage wins, how fast this one car is, it's just shocking, really. Not only has he not going to win this year, but when you think about his two career wins, it was Talladega and a road course. He hasn't really won on what I would consider a standard, if you can believe it, type downforce racetrack. Maybe this is the day. First ever career pole blew my mind. Yep. Maybe he'll get that win on a standard type downforce track today. You see first 13 races, his best finish was second. Last three, tenth. Uh, the numbers pretty glaring there after Darlington and the talking that he got from Justin Marks as well as the comments that were made by Rick Hendrick about the way he drives. Yeah, you heard Jeff Burton mention it. You know, which Ross are we going to see? I think, I, I mean, I can't imagine the internal battle, right? He has found a way to be successful, but it's come with a lot of baggage. So which side of the fence does he want to be on? Right now, leading, it's pretty easy. It's the question when you start to be have a contested position, then you have to put your elbows up. We heard from Jeff and Junior saying that we're going to see the real Ross Chastain tonight. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400. NASCAR Drive, that's your live race day companion. You're able to follow your favorite drivers with access to their in-car cameras. All you have to do, visit NASCAR.com slash drive, or you can download that NASCAR mobile app to watch all the action. Dave. Kyle Busch was the first one on pit road today. He did not want to be. Listen to this radio. So you're aware, right rear, the right front was fine. Close enough. So he called right front, right front. He came to pit road. They said, are you sure it's just the right front? He said, well, I don't know. You can change all four if you want. So that's what they decided to do on the eight car. Four have been changed, and it was indeed the right rear. It only had nine pounds of air in it. Steve, that is not enough. No, not enough, but you could look at it either as a bad break, flat tire, or great break that he was able to come to pit road, get it changed out back on the racetrack. If you've got to have an issue, have it early. Only 21 laps in the race. You see right there. Uh, the pink paint pen or blue uh, circling the app at the cut. Just unfortunate, right? I mean, that's those are the things in racing that drive you crazy, right? I don't know how to explain that other than just bad luck. Yeah, he had to get way out of the gas there as he was up the racetrack following Eric Jones in the 43 here. to the fence in both ends. We've been riding along with the Cheddars on board there with Kyle Busch. Now he ducks down to the inside trying to get by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And you give you a reference, right? Ricky Stenhouse is 19th on the lead lap. So 
Kyle Busch is a lap down and about mid-pack in the field. So he's not going to drive up and pass the leader. Uh, he just needs to, in a perfect world, he would get a caution before anyone else gets lapped, and he'd be right back on the lead lap. So, you know, just take a deep breath, just keep pushing, and see how the yellows play out. Chastain still with that quarter-second gap over Tyler Reddick up front. Reddick has just not been able to find a way to get out of Ross Chastain's shadow. And it's Martin Trunks Jr. William Byron back there in fourth. Denny Hamlin back in the fifth spot. Logano, Haley, Elliott, Wallace, and Busher all in the top ten. Here, 24 laps now, 25 laps into this one. Yeah, stage is 90 laps. We can expect they can run right around 70 on fuel, maybe just a little short or just a little over 70 laps. So you'll have to make a pit stop if this stage does run green. Now we see a little bit higher line out of Reddick. We'll see if that momentum pays off. It doesn't close the gap much, though. On the bottom, you see Bubba Wallace in the 23, Chris Busher from RFK in the 17. That's the ninth and 10th position. RFK continuing to improve. Uh, you know, they got that win at Bristol, and this year I think it's incremental. Each week they just seem to find a little bit better, uh, a little bit more confidence. I think it's not going to be long until we see not just a win, but multiple wins, both cars winning for RFK. And changes continue with RFK as far as maybe modernizing a lot of the things that they had, you know, almost done traditionally uh, with the move of of Keselowski coming over uh, in the ownership side of that, uh, changing some things, changing the atmosphere over there at RFK. We see Ryan Blaney now in the 12 coming into the picture here. Yeah, Ryan Blaney, this team, they've been running really well lately. They got that big win in the Coach 600. Broke a long winning streak. Took a lot of pressure off this team. You see now he's trying to, to get around Bubba Wallace. That's what you do at this racetrack. That's why we love it so much. Is the car you run the top. You just go wherever they are. Ryan Blaney trying to figure your way around. Top of the racetrack here against his good buddy Bubba Wallace. The Fords have really struggled a little bit this year against the Chevrolets and the Toyotas recently. This guy right here, though, William Byron, has been leading the charge in the Ford camp. You guys mentioned the win for Ryan Blaney at Charlotte. Jonathan Hassler, his crew chief, told me, hey, we were good there as he brushes the wall right there and does make the pass on Bubba Wallace or tries to into turn three. How about that move for Ryan Blaney? But a moment ago, he said something about the brakes on the radio. Listen. Pretty bad brakes. Can't get going here. Didn't have it in practice. That's a little weird. He said pretty bad brake shakes to get going. Didn't have it in practice. That's a little weird. So there you go, Steve. So how about the brake shake issue that was very early in this run as well, and it didn't happen in practice. Would that concern you? Well, in years past, uh, I would say, oh, it's going to be fine, Rick. It'll clean itself up. But the truth is we have seen some rotor issues at St. Louis. We've actually had some brakes fail and come apart. Let's take another look. Just high, trying to get to the right side of the 23. I don't know if you got a bad arrow position or just got a little bit up the racetrack. I don't think the contact was too heavy, not a lot of damage, but that brake shake. Thank you for running me in the fence. Really appreciate it. One more word, but... Well, there you go. So is he saying that Bubba ran him into the fence? So I guess he thought he was going to have more space on the outside of Bubba when Bubba came up, whether the space or the air or the vision or the combination of the three got him all the way into the fence. But we're going to monitor that brake situation. To close out that story, normally shake is something on the pads. But what we thought happened in St. Louis is that these rotors actually have a little bit of float. And when that free freezes up, they grow, they make contact with other parts of the brakes, and they can explode. So we'll have to see if this 12-car brake issue is, a, is just an annoyance or a true concern. And again, Blaney currently running in the 10th spot, just behind Busher, Chastain, and Reddick. Now the gap between one and two, a little bit more, eight-tenths of a second separating the top two. Well, there's tons of excitement down here, Junior. It's a lot of fun to be here right here with the car.
Cup cars get it done. So we're going to go to break. Hey, Chastain still leads the Ally 400. We'll see you on the back side. We're going to the booth. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Ally. Do it right. Sonic. Mmm. Sonic. And by Toyota. Let's go places. That's the famous Ryman Auditorium there in downtown Nashville. So many historic acts have been on that stage. Careers made. Speaking of careers, there's a guy that's got a couple guitars after winning at this racetrack. Standing by with Dave. And Ricky's one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. This is Carl Edwards, and he's here this weekend as the inaugural member of the Walk of Fame here at the Concrete Mile and a Third. That's because you won here six times overall. It's pretty good. It's not easy here, is it? No, it's not easy at all. Coming in, my wife said, you must love this place. It's like, man, I've had some real crises in the driver's seat here. It's hard to get a grip on this racetrack. It's so edgy. And when you watch these guys, I mean, they're working hard. Their crew chiefs are going to work hard. It's a really tough place. Not the first time we've seen you back at a racetrack. Are you plotting anything, Carl? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm having a lot of fun. Get to do a lot of neat things, but it really is an honor to be here. It's cool to see everybody. NASCAR did a lot of great things for me, and it's just it's fun to be here. And you made your way around the garage. I understand you had a conversation with the pole sitter and race leader yeah. Chastain. So I, I hear all these rumors, like Ross Chastain's confidence is low. I talked to him. He's got a, a hop in his step. I think he's going to be tough to beat today. We're glad you're back. Come back anytime, and welcome to the uh, Walk of Fame here at Nashville. That's cool. Thank you so much. Carl Edwards, Rick, always good to see him. Always great to have Carl Edwards. We mentioned the successes of Carl Edwards and what he's been able to do behind the wheel. Everyone on their feet here wanting to see that. The flip from Carl Edwards winning in Nashville. Any gifts that Gibson guitar is going to play as a tune. That's fun. And um, what a race, man. That was, uh, that was just really good racing. Awesome job, guys. And Carl is not going to disappoint. He is already into the stands and heading for the fans. There he goes. And here is Martin Trex Jr. making the first green flag stop of the day. The crew already to the left side. Four tires to no go fuel for Martin Trex Jr. Said he could not get off one and two the way he wanted to. Just slight air pressure adjustment for him. As we look at the five car, Kyle Larson said it was very bad on throttle. Adjustment there. Kyle Larson down and away, Dave. And you see Denny Hamlin now leaving pit row. He described his car as a little bit edgy, but he's been going the right direction. The 11's fast. Marty. You see leader Ross Chastain coming down pit road has led 42 laps to this point. So the car just got a little too free the further he ran. So all these teams in essence sort of splitting this first stage, which is 90 laps in half. Also Ryan Blaney on pit road. He too saying his car getting too free. And a lot of crew teams and spotters, they feel like that the track has really changed here. And also the 45 of Tyler Reddick on pit road as well. He is well free. So Steve, certainly the track changing. Teams deciding to split this first stage. Now. Yeah, we. I mean, the track's going to continue to change. That's the interesting thing about the start time of this race. Last year, it was a, a delay, a weather delay that got us later into the evening. This is a scheduled plan of a later start. As now we see William Byron gives up the lead, coming to his pit stall. One, one lap further than everybody else. You see the chassis change to tighten up the 24 car as well. Byron was pretty quick out there. Also, the 22 on pit road in front of you, Dave. Paul Wolf, the crew chief, told me earlier today, I'd be hesitant to split it in half because the tire wear isn't that great this weekend. Well, he had to follow what everyone else was doing. Joey Logano on and off of pit road, as is Chase Elliott. He has been moving forward early in the race, going the right direction. They'll come down here for four Goodyear tires in Sunoco Fuel. Last year's winner, Chase Elliott. And we hear a lot of teams saying we've got to make some changes, some chassis adjustments. Kim. And here is the six of Brad Keselowski, chassis adjustment there, four tires, Snoko Fuel. They felt confident about their long run, needed help on the short end. 
the 34 of Michael McDowell, a lonely roll down pit road at pit road speed because of this, a commitment line violation. You see the yellow line, the orange box right there. He just crossed over it. You cannot touch that box. Four tires below it. So an issue coming to pit road for that reason. He had a pass through penalty. Here comes Alex Bowman. Marty. Alex Bowman will run a little bit farther here. Blake Harris, his crew chief, making that call. He'll come in for four fresh Goodyear tires like everybody else. A little two, three for him. Now, Daniel Suarez started at the very back of the field in a backup car today. He was so quick coming through the field. So, Steve, if you're Travis Mack, do you leave him out? I guess the answer is no. You come to pit road right now, but Suarez has an awfully quick car. Even though it's a backup car, he was very fast, wrecked in qualifying. This backup car has the same speed as that primary had earlier in the weekend and that's very impressive I mean you just with the limited amount of practice the teams just don't put as much effort in the backup cars as they used to congratulations to track house to take it the opposite approach have this backup car giving Daniel Suarez in their hometown of Nashville a chance a little bit long in the box though Marty a little bit long in the box, but a nice uh, stop nonetheless, and they'll put four fresh Goodyear tires on here. Suarez, unlike a lot of the other drivers, saying this car was pretty good on that run, didn't request any big changes, back out on the racetrack. Tootsie's a very famous establishment here on Broadway in Nashville, the sponsor of the 99, as Chastain now chasing after Ty Dillon, who hasn't come to pit road yet. And I think this call for Ty Dillon is an interesting one. You know, if you're in the back third of the field, you're almost starting a race for laps. It's been a real bit, little bit of a rough year at Spire Motorsports for the 77 to Ty Dillon, full-time driver for the first time in this car number for the organization. They had some engine issues early, some bad luck, some loose wheels. I think they're trying to get something to go their way. Maybe they'll get a fortunate caution here, try to stay on the lead lap. In stage one, continue to work on the car. Green flag pit stops have cycled through with the exception of Ty Dillon. Haley to the outside of the 17 of Busher. Haley again with a career best starts, trying to hold on to that track position. We'll be back with more from Nashville. Do you remember playing with Hot Wheels as a kid? Well, they just got a whole lot bigger. Buckle up for an exciting new competition. Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge. It's Tuesday on NBC and streaming on Peacock. Great aerial views and aerial coverage brought to you by Pods. If you're moving this summer, save up to 30% at Pods.com today. Thankful that the sun is shining. There was talk of the possibility of thunderstorms going through here in the late evening and that sunshine welcome as Ross Chastain up front and a half a second lead now over Tyler Reddick guys if you caught your breath thanks for coming back up to the booth with us it's good to be up here in air conditioning it's hot down there but it is fun to be down there in excitement the car is flying by you kind of Forget how fast they're going until they're standing right next to them. They are rolling down the front straight. Such a big difference from yesterday with the Xfinity cars and the dual exhaust coming out the left and the right side for the cup cars. And once they start wrapping around the entire racetrack, it's nearly impossible to drown out that noise. But uh, it is fun. It is fun being down there and that energy at the start of the race was exciting. And I'm impressed by this race car and how it competes at this racetrack. I'm impressed with Nashville Super Speedway. I did not think that this racetrack would race this well. The last two years has been incredible. And look here, look at this, this type of racing we're going to see all night long. Two, three wide even. A.J. Allmendinger trying to work his way through the middle of this sandwich. A couple colleague racing drivers right there with Haley. And Almondinger, 31 and 16, chasing after the 12. Yeah, and Almondinger, that big win yesterday in his Xfinity series. And look at this. The one struggling a little bit, trying to clear the lap car. Noah Gragson right there, racing him really hard, trying to stay on the lead lap. Gragson back after being out a couple weeks with a concussion. Miss Sonoma took an off weekend to get a little better. But look, this is not allowing Reddick to close. Reddick is sort of in a position where the air's a little bit dirty. He's on old tires and slipping around a little bit. He's gonna go way up the racetrack for some clean air to see if that can help him get this run off turn two down the back straightaway. 
Yeah, one thing I'm noticing is that all the cars are so similar in speed that it's hard to lap. You know, Nolan Grex is running 26, and it's not like Ralph Chastain can just fly up here and go blind by him. And to me, like, I think the 42 car of Grex is doing a great job pinching him off, not letting the one car be where it really wants to be. Gregson's not doing anything wrong. He's got to race hard. He's earned an opportunity to try to stay on the lead lap here, but it's going to create an opportunity. Look at Reddick. He gets to run. Noah backs out of that. Reddick right on inside. the back bumper. Yeah, here comes the 45. Tyler Reddick trying to take the lead away from Ross Chastain, and he'll do it. Also, keep in mind, been a little activity between Ross and Noah on pit road earlier this year. A little physical altercation. Maybe there was something to that, racing him a little bit harder, but it gives us a lead change here. 29, 29, 29 laps to go in stage one. Well, now Noah's mission is to try to stay in this position, to be the first car one lap down in case a caution comes out. So that fight that Noah put up delays the 45 car or the one car, whichever happened to be leading to catch the next leader. Look, you can't see the next lap car that would be the next lap car. So Noah did a nice job of slowing them down. Can Ross mount a charge? Is there an opportunity to, was he up there really running as hard as he possibly could? You mentioned that altercation. These two not seeing eye to eye at Kansas earlier this year. Noah thought that Ross had taken him up into the wall. Chastain's going to connect with a right. Noah had a good one coming back. It gets broke up before Noah could respond. I don't think they like each other. Um, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't look like Noah was giving Ross any room when he was trying to get by him. No, he wasn't. And you know that's that's he can do that. I mean, he got punched him in the face. So he's lost the lap. He's going to try to figure out how to get that back later in the race. I know everybody laughed home last. I laughed too. That, that was funny. Apparently, <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> apparently that allows you to race somebody uh, hard. Yeah. I see a new series. This is Dale Jr. Parenting <laughs> tips one on one. If you can punch <laughs> in the face, you can swing back. Yeah. I, mean, that like, I agree. I agree with that. Ross is hanging in here. I know that, you know, he, he might have been just kind of running 90%, maybe 85%. So. We'll see if he can mount a charge. Reddick was really fast in practice yesterday. This one car was as well, but I think Reddick, we all agree, was probably the best car. But I talked to Ross before the race started. I said, hey, man, no, you're fast, but what's the car like on the long run? He just grinned and nodded, walking away. I think this guy's really confident in what he can do tonight. Teams are going to have to stay up on changes, uh, especially the way the track changes, because that's what happened a year ago when Toyota was so dominant on this racetrack. But then late changes in the race and it ended up being Chase Elliott who stayed out and was able to get the win. I want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap and it's a race leader Tyler Reddick his fourth lap of this race 30.318 seconds just under 158 miles an hour average speed around this mile and a third. Kim. And a team that had a lot of confidence coming into this weekend, it was the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. You see the Toyota onboard camera. After those green flag stops, though, Martin came on the radio and said, guys, the balance is not quite right after those changes. Then he added a little more specificity later in this run, saying he is loose in, tight center, loose off, can't do what he wants with that race car. So they'll look for more changes at the end of this stage, Dave. Chase Elliott is up five positions from the start of the race, and he's heard the great words, hey, fastest car on the track a couple of different times. Not the Xfinity fastest lap overall, but he's been the fastest of everyone a couple of different times. And that is good news. Now, Alan Gustafson told me today they weren't great at the start last year. They won the race. They're great at the start this year. Steve, you know the challenge. Okay, let's keep it great while the track changes. That's it. You know it's going to change. You have an idea which direction it's going to go, as now we see the battle for the lead back on as Chastain has caught the 45 is to the inside of him, Rick. Let's see if he can make the pass down there on the yellow line, but he's going to have another car. Slide job. To come and affect Slide him. Slide job, Rick. <laughs> I've heard that before. We see the 45 of Reddick making his way back up in front. Did you think that the one was going to slide up into Reddick there? He was just trying to take his line away, seeing if Reddick would back out of the gas. He throttled up with the only opportunity really he had to try to take that spot away. That tells you how hard it is to make the pass, but I'm so glad to see this one loses the lead. 
and now he's going to be able to have enough race car to try to go back up there and get that lead back. Comers and goers, this 45, not good out front. Look at this, Todd Gillen and 38 on the inside. It's closing the gap again between one and two. Now we'll see if Chastain can mount another surge to see if he can get by Reddick. He goes to the top of the racetrack down here, Rick, trying to see if he can create some momentum. He's passing a lap car, but also running the top. So this is see how they got side by side. Ross is way back there, so the 45 gets up a little bit too high, and I think that he wasn't sure he was slick in the dirt, in the marbles, wasn't sure about getting back to the throttle. That allowed the one to get there. So a big mistake on the 45, not so much that Ross is better trying to run him down, just a slip up for Reddick trying to get that higher groove working in. The drivers talk about not being able to really see where the groove is obviously you can tell where the rubber's put down but they don't know where that resin on the racetrack is it doesn't have a color so when you try to move the groove even higher and higher and higher you take a risk of getting up there in the dirty stuff reddick's been out front for 11 laps he's being chased by chastain who was up front for 52 the top two separated by half a second Thanks for joining us for the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 on NBC. Liberty University, it's more than William Byron's sponsor. It's actually his school. Offering more than 700 flexible, affordable degree programs online and on campus. You can get your future on track today. Visit liberty.edu slash 24. Byron moving up through the field here into third place. Look at his 20 car right here. Christopher Bell in ninth. Yeah, big mover uh, since the start of the race. 11 positions already for Christopher Bell. Yeah, Christopher started the year out pretty strong and then lately has not been as good. But so far early in this race, good speed. Another car that's driven up through the field pretty nicely is Corey LaJoy. Corey had to do a lot of repairs to this car after a qualifying accident. He had to start in the very pack of, back of the pack. He's driven up to 25th. Yeah, they didn't have to go to a backup. They didn't have to check basically the rear bumper, rear fascia, quarter panel. Made some pretty decent contact with the back of the car off turn four and qualifying, as you mentioned, Jeff, but were able to stick with their primary car. LaJoy getting that opportunity to fill in for Chase Elliott. And that kind of dream job of driving for Hendrick Motorsports. Corey LaJoy has been a very strong contender. When he gets the opportunity, we saw him at Bristol uh, fighting up front. When he gets the opportunity, has a good car underneath him. He's very competitive. And somebody that's not had a good start to this race, Joey Logano started fourth. He's back to 22nd. He's the second highest running forward. Highest running forward right now, 11th of Busher. See his teammate Blaney right behind Logano. We showed all the cars that were on the move. Bell Suarez, LaJoy. Another car moving through the field. The 16 of A.J. Allmendinger is all the way up into 10th place. Won yesterday's Xfinity race. Had a great drive. Continues to drive through the field today. A very strong car. How much of that momentum coming from a win in the Xfinity Series, can he move over here and bring to his cup car? I think that having some of the laps on the track and knowing how slippery this track was yesterday, now he learned something everybody else in this cup race didn't, but the shift pattern of the car being so different, the rack opinion steering, the tires being so different, he didn't really learn anything as far as balance or anything that's really going to help his performance or this car drive better because of what he did, right? So. I do know that he understands where the groove is, um, where he can take the car, where to find speed. That he learned all that yesterday, and he had an awesome performance to be able to take the win. Colleagues not had an incredible season so far in the Cup Series. It's a new team building, improving. These are the runs that they need out of their two drivers. They had a great qualifying effort with Haley this year or this weekend. Haley back in 15th, but AJ getting it done in the top 10 today. He wants to stay there. Here's yesterday's race, driving that number 10. 
and the iconic trophy that you win here in Nashville. We talk about drivers, uh, how to inspire and, and, and get them fired up about winning races at certain tracks. You give them a unique trophy. Yep. They talk, he talked about that in his post-race, being able to win that guitar. Gibson, only, Paul. You can only win it here, Rick. Nowhere else. Gibson is their headquarters located here in Nashville as we see the 22 of Blaney going to the outside of teammate Joey Logano. See on the left side, the fuel for all of the cars. No real concern for most of the field, but in the seventh place, Kyle Busch, remember he had that flat right rear tire at lap 16, Dave, 69 laps on this fuel run. We thought that could go around 70. Uh, so they're really trying to stretch this tank. Okay, so here's the fuzzy map that I have, Steve. I heard 73 in the pits, which means probably 74 or 5. He put it on lap 16. That means he should be able to make it because he knows how to save fuel as well. So right now he's in the top 10, doing pretty well, although he does have some feedback for his team. Listen to one, good through the center of one and two, missed off of two, good into three, tight, two numbers tight, center three, four. Good off of four. I got differences between the ends. Right now, that the steering sucks. I think Randall Burnett will be able to fix everything except the steering, probably. I like that one. What I like this, he didn't say, hey, can you fix it? He just write it down so we can talk about it this week. I know you can't fix it, but this needs to be discussed this week in the meeting. I don't like the steering. That was great description, though, guys. I mean, he took us really a whole lap, compared the two ends, not just entry, middle, and exit. A lot of good information for his crew chief. One car washing up in the dirty air there, a little bit trying to get a run on the on the leader, the 45 car Reddick, as they go through some traffic. This presents an opportunity, and look at the back there. Byron Truex closing in on the duo up front, making this a four-car battle for the lead, all within a second and a half of each other. Coming up on the end of stage one, just under three laps to go. Truex firing it down into the turn three down shifts, looks low. On the 24 car Byron, back to the throttle. Back in the high gear right there. Early shifts down in the corner. Reminds me of old days in Pocono into turn one. Using that downshift, Jeff, to help the car rotate. Talk about how these cars drive better when you put that RPM in there. Yeah, that's one of the reasons you hear them shift so early is that the sooner you can get more RPMs in it, the better the car drives. So there was a time where we would wait a long time and shift, but these cars love those RPMs. So as soon as you can get it in a lower gear, get RPMs in it, that puts some forces in the transaxle that just makes the car drive better. While Reddick drives away in the lead, half second over Chastain. Chastain's starting to see a little business in his rearview mirror. As Byron's getting closer and closer on this final lap. Got a little bit loose there through one and two. Did the one of Ross Chastain. And now Corey LaJoy making it a little bit more difficult for Tyler Reddick on this final turn of stage one. But it's going to be Tyler Reddick grabbing his third stage win this year. Ross Chastain, William Byron, Martin Shrex Jr. And Denny Hamlin, the top five in stage one. And Corey stays on the lead lap there by racing hard. You know who's happy about that? Noah Gragson. So he'll be the first car lap down for an opportunity to get the, the free pass. Chase Elliott, sixth in stage one. Once again, a great event from here at Nashville Super Speedway. We'll brush with the wall there on the 12th. Ryan Blaney, how about a brush with a bowl? Yeah, that's in the infield here. The NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. And by Credit One Bank, a credit card company. Sold-out crowd here at Nashville Super Speedway. All smiles on the face, even though that uh, fan right there. Ally hat as the car's on the pit road and headed towards you, Kim. Top left, Mark Drex Jr., fourth place finish in that stage, but he said, I'm disconnected in the rubber. I cannot carry momentum. The left rear getting a little bit squeaky.
squirrely four fresh Goodyear tires to Noco Fuel for Truex, Dave. Number 11, Denny Hamlin gives up fifth position. He said it was migrating just the same as the first run, but a little bit worse turning in the middle of the corner. Marty. Playoff point in the book for Tyler Reddick. He said he's loose on throttle and also a mention of brake shake, which we heard earlier from another car as well. Nice stop by that bunch also up on front of pit road. Ross Chastain said his car too free on exit, but the best stop, William Byron and his team showing why they've been number one on pit road. They leave with the lead, Rick. William Byron's team getting it done. The 24 gets to that line before the one. So William Byron will start up front when we come back. History will be made in a week. Yeah, that's Lake Michigan back there. It's the Chicago street race for the first time ever. NASCAR will have a street course that they will race on Saturday. It's Xfinity Series on USA Sunday on NBC, the Cup Series. And what an incredible facility this is. Grant Park, uh, Buckingham Fountain right there in the center of all the action. Of course, it will take place on and right now, Parker Kligerman is actually at the course. And Parker, what has amazed you so far since you've been to the course today? Well, Rick, as you can see right now, it was actually pretty nice. And then just as we started this, it started downpouring uh, here. But behind me, you can see the beautiful skyline, and it really gives you a sense of how this track is deep in the heart of Chicago. And right now, I'm standing in what's called the President's Paddock Club, which is an Ida B. Wells Drive, which leads to sort of the entrance of the city. And actually, it's at the end of where turns 8 and 9 are on this 12-turn course. And it's fitting that NASCAR would choose Chicago as its first ever street course race because back in 1890, the first ever major auto race in America was held here in Chicago to Evanston and back to Chicago. It was 54 miles. It took 10 hours and 23 minutes. And I'm no rocket scientist, but I think the races on Saturday and Sunday will be a little faster than that. And I can tell you it is palpable, the enthusiasm that this city has for this racetrack. As I walked around here today, you could see fans and people taking pictures of the course being set up, the grandstands, all the event atmosphere around here is starting to build up. You can just tell that Everyone's excited. Yeah, smiles on everyone's face. Parker, thank you so much for being out there. We appreciate that. Getting us a, a little preview of what we're going to see next week. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. A few quick updates. The four and the eight both caught speeding. And A.J. Allmendinger lost a few stop, uh, spots with a slow pit stop. Coming back to the start of stage two. Again, William Byron with that great pit stop. He's up front with Ross Chastain on his outside. Might be three wide here off of turn two. Look at Truex to the inside. Ross Chastain on the outside of Byron. Little contact right there. Byron, the 24, into the left rear of Chastain, the one. Chastain surging ahead on the high line, but here comes Truex Jr. on the inside, right in the middle, the 24 of Byron. Look at this racing at this racetrack. This is incredible for the lead. Three wide for almost a full lap. Chastain with the advantage when they go into the turn, but then Martin Trex Jr. brings that 19. William Byron fighting back in the middle. Still three wide. Finally, Trex backs out, but back to the throttle to the inside. Three wide for fourth, fourth fifth, sixth. Yeah. <laughs> that's Christopher Bell in the 20 that's holding on to fourth right now, but still the fight for the top position. So important right now for the spotters to be reminding them you're three wide, whether on the top, the middle, or the bottom. You have to give each other room, especially old corner entry. Even still middle. No one giving still, an inch. Back to the 19 now. Back to the 19, coming back <laughs> to you. This is crazy. Got to be even with the one entry. Now the 24 surging ahead of the 19, and can he clear the one? He doesn't. Here comes Ross Chastain on the outside again. As they side draft each other, slows them down a little bit. The 19's going to clear them both. Yeah, I thought William Byron got tight on the exit of the corner. He got up the racetrack, ran the one up the racetrack. That slowed both of their momentum down. Martin Truex Jr. jumps out front. Two wins already this season. Two out of the last six races, as a matter of fact, he's been one of the hottest drivers in NASCAR, not only this year, but over the last eight years, he's been the winningest driver. Ross trying to go after him, gets a little tight again through three and four, loses a position to Byron there in the 24. Byron down into turn one, trying to go after Truex. 
Trix won both stages here last year, was fast all night long. Didn't get the win. He wants to come back here and try to do it tonight. While these two right here, Byron, Chastain continue to battle. Tyler Reddick trying to put that 45 back in the picture. 12 of Blaney trying to work his way up through, possibly into the top five side draft. And that five of Larson. Larson battling hard on the outside. Fours just haven't been that strong of late. 12 of Blaney has kind of been the bright spot for them this season as he's trying to take this position away. Yeah, only Blaney and Logano have been able to find victory lane for the Ford camp. This fight continues as Larson on that outside line, but you see the side drafting. Blaney trying to take a little bit of air off of the spoiler, put some air on the spoiler of the five so he can get past him. A little movement from the five on the outside there, and that's going to do it. That's going to do a little slip of the right rear on the five. Blaney takes the spot. Coming into the picture of the nine of Chase Elliott. Larson sort of struggled here last year. Kind of run around the back half of the top ten. Wasn't one of the fastest cars all night long. Looks exactly like he does right now. Trying to find a balance on this five car has been tough for him. Busher to the outside trying to be able to get a spot. He's going to get there. RFK has been strong this year. Really impressive what Busher and Keselowski have been able to do. Push her into ninth place over the five as you look to battle the bottom of the screen. Eric Amarola looking for anything good to happen this year. It's been an awful year for the 10 car. Talk to him this weekend. He's got a smile on his face. Still half a year left to get things turned around, and he runs really good here. Had some good finishes here. 2021 with a top 10. Gibbs is going to take that spot, though. And here comes A.J. Allmendinger in his 16 car trying to work his way back toward the front after a tough pit stop. Lost him a few spots. To his outside, Alex Bowman in that Ally 48. Little, that was right up against the wall there. <laughs> yeah, Bowman, Bowman not happy about that. Bowman into the, into the door, hand Wait, out nope. the window. Hey, man, come <laughs> on. Give me some room. My goodness. Bowman is already coming here with a chip on his shoulder because he got wrecked out of this race early last year. He talked to me about that. He's like... I'm ready for something good to happen. Look at that. A.J., remember he had that oh. bad pit stop, came out 20th. He's driven back up to 11th. A.J. is a little hand signal out of A.J. there, too. A.J. is a little hothead. He ain't going to like that. Well, this is a good time for spotters. Look up here in the top. 108 laps to 300. Hey, guys, calm down. Long way to go. I know you're mad. A lot of work to do. Well, what makes that even tougher is that exit of turn four has a bump. So look right here at the 48. I mean, He's got a wiggle, not a lot of space. We talked about it as an action-filled week. Well, the accidents we saw in qualifying were kind of all off turn four, right in that spot where Alex Bowman was really in trouble with space to the wall. And now here they are side by side again. We'll see if they can play a little nicer, Marty. Yeah, the battle continues, and actually the frustration for Alex Bowman went back to the restart. His spotter, Kevin Hamlin, you mentioned, Jeff, the spotters need to get in and calm this situation down. Said we can't play, quote, nice guy teammates. They pushed Chase Elliott. He said we gave up too many spots, and then he reminded him after that battle with the 16, hey, long way to go. We have a great car. Don't waste it now, Kim. And the booth mentioning AJ being a little bit of a hothead behind the wheel. Well, that also carries over into the feedback he gives to his team, and when I talked to crew chief, Almadinger currently running in the 12th position. Bowman just in front of him in 11th. It's Martin Truex Jr. that's out front. You see Chase Elliott going by Blaney. You're trying to make that pass. That's for seventh. More racing from Nashville when we return. Moving this summer? Join the 6 million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with Pods. Save up to 30% now at Pods.com today. What a crowd, Rick. I mean, it's a sellout. Place looks amazing. We were coming in early today, and the parking lot was already half full. I mean, these people came out. They came out in droves all day long. This is 
the party is continuing. Look at all the smiles. That's a, You see that? That was yeah. a 78 Martin Truex Jr. hat with a 19, 19 Martin sure. Truex Jr. T-shirt. That's like showing your com you know fan commitment through the generations. The years of support. I like that. Martin Truex Jr. out front by a second and a third over William Byron. Byron had got the lead after his pit stop, but it was Truex that was able to get by him after that three-wide battle. And most recently, the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., a very impressive run at Sonoma. It was impressive because, you know, no stage breaks anymore at the road courses. So the strategy gets a bit, little bit more, uh, you know, spun around, can get mixed up. And the 19 actually got a bad break when a yellow came out, lost a bunch of track position, and was able to drive through the field. That's what really impressed me, not just the speed. Um, but once he kind of got mired back there in traffic, he found a way back to the front. Impressive drive for the 19. So, I mean, these numbers right here are just amazing since 2016, right? 30 wins. And I think he had a winless year last year. So, you know, when you think of 30 wins, um, it was fun. We had him on the Peacock Pit Box during qualifying, and he, you know, he reminded me of the Truex that was so close to winning some of those championships, winning all those races, had a smile on his face, was excited to be here. Him and James Small have definitely had some ups and downs. There's James on top of the pit box. Their communication style is a little unlike anything else. We heard about how Almondinger gets fiery on the radio. Well, this time I'll actually re reverse it. I think Truex is the calm one on the radio. James is the one that kind of pokes him back a little bit, but it works for these two. Well, they, you know, a lot of criticism last year, right? They didn't make the playoffs. They finished fourth in regular season points, but they didn't make the playoffs. And Truex is a driver that we've become accustomed to contending for championships. And, you know, fourth in, championships, fourth in regular season is great, but you got to win. And they found they didn't win, but this year they've been able to get those wins, and things have, are much, much better. Well, there's action. We saw that three-wide battle for the lead was just – my mind was – blowing trying to, I mean, it was exploding trying to figure out what's happening but there's beating and banging all over the racetrack we've seen the 16 and the 48 go back and forth at one another the 47 of ricky stenhouse jr and the three of austin dillon they also have uh i won't say traded words but traded some gestures took a couple swipes at each other on the racetrack you can see right here this is the 47 he was clear ish i mean he comes all the way up right here and I, I mean, the three, I think, has no choice. I don't know if he was going to continue to take him up, and there's actual contact. I think the 47 had a bobble right there and chased it up into the three. This is the 48. Telling the 16, he's not happy. We've seen them going at it. You know, one thing about this car I noticed is that drivers run other drivers out of the groove more than they have in the past. It's become a... It's become a way you drive these race cars as you go to the throttle so early and you just use all the racetrack up and if somebody's out there, you just kind of run them out of the groove and you hear a lot of drivers talking about others being not respectful and that's what they're talking about. It's just, you know, that's something you didn't see in the past, but it's become fairly custom to watch it. And the reason why I think they're able to do that is because the way this car doesn't get loose and doesn't lose side force when you drive up next to somebody. So if you're going to get up close to somebody with the old car, you tend to get loose right when you got next to them, and you're definitely going to make contact, take you both up into the fence. This car here, you drive in the gas, and when you get next to another car, you don't lose any of that side force and rear grip. Kevin Harvick right here off the rear bumper of Stenhouse. Harvick had that speeding penalty, so he's driven himself back up. He's just outside the top 20. Stenhouse running 20th. Great look right here from the ballpark buns camera. Looking back. You know, Jeff, you talk about that move, and I remember the first time we saw, like, those big slide job moves, and you were unhappy with those. You said that that would never happen when you were a driver. I'd love to see your reaction if someone just ran you kind of up and took the lane. You guys would lose your minds. I would not have been happy. <laughs> Stenhouse was just right into the back bumper of the 22 car, lost a lot of air, lost the whole car, and the four is going to get by him right here. 22 falling backwards through the field. Logano struggling. Harvick now on the charge trying to get to this 22. You see the 22 in the high lane up here in front of us, off the nose of this 47. Harvick there in the orange car on the bottom of the screen. I lost all my front grip. My rear is no different, but we're plowing whatever we did. Well, he was right up behind the 22, and it's going to lose a lot of front grip when you do that. 
Dave, what you got? Oh, I got Christopher Bell moving up through the field. He's the second biggest mover on the afternoon. 15 positions up from where he started back in 20th. He's up in the top five now. Just a slight air pressure adjustment last time to make it perfect. Marty? Boy, Dave, at the end of the last run, Ryan Blaney, Blaney was struggling to stay in the top 15. But after an adjustment from Jonathan Hassler, how did it fire off on this run? Listen in. All right, off really good. I'm starting a little tight here. Driving the corner so deep. I, I can't do it. A little honest commentary from Ryan Blaney saying, I cannot drive as deep as those around me, saying he's little, losing a little bit of grip at the end of the run, too, Kim. Well, we've talked about the building that RFK is doing, and I asked crew chief Scott Graves what their approach is for this 17 car of Chris Busher, and he said, you can't just hope to knock off a win. You have to do the work to consistently put yourself in position. For them, that means running top five. Weekend, and they feel like they've done a good job of that this season. They're continuing that now. Busher right now in the 10th position, just a little bit on the free side. See Busher right now, playoff bubble. He's currently in the 13th spot. I would say comfortably, 110 above that cut line. Mark Trucks Jr. out front. Nashville, Tennessee, the cornerstone of the music industry. You think back to 1959 when Dolly Parton started out here. Then in the 60s, Jimi Hendrix, Billy Cox, Otis Redding, Little Richard, Edda James. So many names made here at Nashville. It's the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 on NBC from Nashville Super Speedway. Martin Shrux Jr. still out front, has a little over a second lead over Tyler Reddick. Running in the second spot, and Rennick was able to get by Byron. As we'll take a look at how that pass was made. Byron at the top of the racetrack, Reddick turns down off the bottom of the corner. Down the back straightaway, a little bit of a side draft. Doesn't really get too aggressive with that. Byron lifting, allowing this 45 to go by. Realizes that he doesn't have the car to hold him off right now. About 15 laps away from the halfway point of this race, and already the front stretch completely in the shadows, so the track will be changing, Dave. Kyle Busch can pass race cars. We certainly know that, and we saw that in this last run from 28th on the restart after a pit road penalty up to 15th. He needs it to turn a little bit better in the center of the corner. Ty Gibbs below him in the 54 car. It's been okay this day. Pretty loose on that last run, Marty. About the same point in this stage as everyone pitted in stage one, splitting it in essence in half. You see William Byron jumping to his stall, saying the car just got too free the further he ran. Also, Ross Chastain pulling in. Same comments for Chastain said the car just got way too free. So that's sort of the commentary from a lot of the drivers track changing in this run as well, Kim. And for the five car of Kyle Larson, he told his team he's struggling on restarts tighter than it was before. Earlier in the run, though, he said it was free in the rubber. We'll look at Martin Trex Jr. in the pits right now. Martin coming in just a little bit sideways on this stop. No major complaints, though, for Truex and that Toyota day. Chase Elliott, this run, not bad because he still likes the balance. So where they were, they are, and he is okay with that. A little interference on the radio has been annoying, but it's not stopping them from hearing Chase. Oh, we got a spin back there. Tyler Reddick's around. Tire's off. He's lost a wheel. So right. the and he had just pitted, guys. Just came off pit road for Tyler Reddick. Yeah, caution came out. Uh, he has blocked pit road. You see him rolling now without that right rear tire. Wheel completely off. AMR safety truck's going to secure that tire that's laying on pit road. And Steve, when we talked to NASCAR earlier this weekend, they mentioned if it's if the tire comes off on pit road, it's a different penalty than if it comes off on the racetrack. Yeah. When but he was right there on the entrance to pit road. Well, yellow to yellow, I would say they'd say that it, it was on pit road. Let's take a look right here. He obviously knows he has an issue. You see the fire out the pipes. Right rear tire is trying to come off the car. What a handful. That thing looked like it was evil. So he's trying to get it to pit road. Yeah, the wheel's coming off of it. Yeah. That's what's happening. 
There you see the nut fly up the racetrack there. Come off the wheel. Such an unfortunate break for the 45. He had just pitted, as you said. So obviously on the right side, th these pit stops are so fast. The exchange of the tire is so fast. Um, what are you worried about, Steve, when you see that wheel trying to do that to the to the to the hub there is there any damage or anything that you're concerned with well you see the air is out of the wheel so as, as that wheel was bouncing you could see as it comes loose the brake rotor and caliper actually cuts the aluminum wheel in half and it breaks the inside of the wheel so uh, i don't know imagine there's a lot of damage maybe to the brake caliper it's probably worth inspecting to see what the situation is but there's just not a whole lot of clearance when that wheel comes off that's what keeps it on the car without the nut for at least a few hundred feet is yeah. it's kind of dragging on the brakes It's a good thing that tire, when it came off, it didn't bounce over that pit wall. It rolled into it rolled into pit wall. That's what's so scary about those tires coming off. That thing's heavy. Fortunately, it didn't get momentum and stayed on the ground. Tyler Reddick had led 33 laps of this race, and now a right rear wheel coming off. It's going to take a little bit for the timing and scoring to kind of cycle all through, because remember, we were in the middle of pit stops. So yeah. Hamlin, Keselowski, uh, Bubba Wallace stay focused, get all we can out of it, regardless. had yet to pit, so and it could be a huge gain for some of those guys, especially the 23 and the 6. So we look back from the Coke Zero Sugar pace car cam. Let's go down to Marty. Billy Scott trying to assess the situation here. Dave Rogers is here from 2311 Racing as well. So two laps down for Tyler Reddick. This has been the a bit of an issue for the 45 team this year. They have had speed every week. Execution has been a problem, and occasionally pit road has been a problem as well. So with them being two laps down and early here in the middle of stage two here, Steve, is it game over for Tyler Reddick? What's the path back to getting a top, top, top five or a top ten today? Well, at this point, you're going to have to see some yellows in this race if the 45 wants to have an opportunity to to recover um, it really comes down to where it's cycled to Dale's point you see right here a conversation with the team trying to discuss probably a what happened B what else needs to happen with the car itself is there any damage that's really the answer Marty the first thing you have to do is see what kind of race car you still currently have what kind of damage you have to the race car if the brakes are fine you get a little concerned about the underbody it did slide through the grass right there um, still a long ways to go, short of halfway. And I'm thinking since this dropped during a caution or during a cycle, he's not going to be able to get that free pass right now because a lot of lead lap cars will stay on the racetrack. The 11, the 6, and 23 all came to pit road during all this chaos. Tyler Reddick, again, uh, coming to pit road and the wheel coming off. So let's discuss this. Wheel comes off on the racetrack, it's a two-lap penalty. If the wheel comes off on pit road, it's a tail end or a pass-through penalty. So the wheel's loose, you see it, but this car is past the yellow line. He's now on to pit road, even though he's in the grass and backwards. This right here should be the lesser of the two penalties. I believe Tyler Reddick is going to have a tail end penalty because it's under yellow. He also is going to have, you know, the double tail end penalty. He's on double secret probation <laughs> because he also has a uh, commitment line violation because he goes over the orange box. So I actually think this rule is as clear as it's ever been. If that tire right there that's rolling on pit road would have come off 500 yards earlier in the middle of three and four and it had gone up the banking, that's a two lap penalty for the 45 car. It's all about safety. This is what the teams in NASCAR worked together to come up with. He was obviously trying to come back to pit road. Uh, this is no different than if it would have fallen off as soon as he left his pit box. The difference is he went back on the racetrack and he had some damage. So to go all the way back to Marty's point, Reddick currently is two laps down. He's going to be at the tail end here. It is a... It is not an impossible task, but it is an uphill battle. He's going to need some yellows. He's going to have to get a little bit of a lucky break and hope that there's no damage to the race car slowing it down. That's going to be the big thing. We know that the 45 had a great race car. Now, the rest of the scoring, Truex is the leader. And then behind him, we have a whole ton, 28, actually, 28 wave round cars out of a 36-car field. It'd be easier to list the eight that didn't wave around. Uh, so we have kind of a jumbled up start here in the end there'll be 25 cars on the lead lap a whole bunch of those were wave rounds so it's a confusing point but it's all going to get reset here in the end Truex was the leader before stops he's still the leader now 
Denny Hamlin's second. Brad Kozlowski, a little bit of a good break for him. He's up to third. And Bubba Wallace, who had a good car early and faded, he's now up to fourth. So a good break for a couple of those cars. All right, let's go to the Peacock bit box. And hopefully, hey, were you guys taking notes of what Steve was explaining there as far as the wheel coming off? Yeah, I got it, Rick. Yeah, got it all written down right here. <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about something else, which is Tyler Reddick and this yeah. team, which is a championship caliber driver and team to a certain extent. Yes. But they've got some things to clean up here, KP. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, it's that extra half second, that extra fraction of a second to get that lug nut tight. When you run like these guys have run, you can't afford these mistakes. These are mistakes that take you out of the scoring those 10 points for winning that segment, scoring those nine extra bonus points or that extra playoff point. This is what this team has to clean up to be the type of championship contender we talk about when we talk about Kyle Busch or Joey Logano and those teams. Yeah, and uh, before we send it back up, I just want to talk about that restart uh, to the wow. second stage. Wow. Three wide for three laps. That these guys thought they were in Talladega or something. Listen, that's old school racing right there. Yeah. We, you used to see that at the fairgrounds. You see it at Talladega. You see it at Daytona. You see it other places. But on a mile and a half racetrack on that this mid-range super speedway, very rarely. I was on the edge of my seat, and I know you were too. Yeah, sure was. Well, we were as well, as they are now choosing inside or outside lines for the restart. Dave. Kyle Busch is back in the mix. Here's a discussion with his team. We got a good car, man. We'll make up for it. You're doing a great job out there, all right? Yeah, 10 4. My bad, getting us behind. We'll keep marching along. Yes, sir. Doing a great job. A little positivity there between crew chief Randall Burnett and Kyle Busch. 15th now as they go by the choose line and within striking distance of the front. Dave, there are things in a race that can really change your outcome to the good or the bad. That was a situation right there where two drivers in cars, the six of Keselowski, the 23 of Bubba Wallace, that, penalty, that caution came out at a perfect time. The six was 18th. The 23 was in 22nd. Look where they're running now. They had not pitted. So that was a huge gain to these guys. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. So the 11 and the 19 lead lap, 623 lead lap, 24 lead lap is a free pass. The two is a lap down. This is a very rare occasion, so the field's a little mixed up. What you need to know, the Gibbs cars on the front row, that is for the lead of the race. Going back through the restart zone. And again, race leader Martin Shrex Jr. Go, 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 go. First into the gas. Door oh, to door contact. And the six falling back quickly. Big crash back here. Here comes Blaney around. Kyle Busch going in. Will oh. they miss the wall? A close call there. Blaney may have gotten into the he did hard into the inside wall. Heavy damage to the front of that car. Man. That must have been a pretty hard impact. We don't see these cars suffer that much damage. Just recently, with the improvements to the front and rear clip, they've made them a little more collapsible so that they do uh, collapse so that the driver doesn't take so much of the, the blunt of that force. You can see right there above the car where the car impacted this wall on the inside. AMR safety crew immediately to Ryan. That is heavy damage. The front of that car is really destroyed. Yeah. That wall right there, a concrete wall on the interior of this racetrack. And we put safer barrier all the way around this place on the inside, outside, and you sometimes don't put it somewhere. Cars have a way of finding those areas. We've went through this on all types of circuits throughout the series. Cars go in places you never thought they would. It almost looked as though he couldn't steer it away from that wall, too, because he was headed in a straight line right at the wall when we saw the eight be able to veer off and go a different direction and not make contact. Yeah, just a just a weird series of events that put him in motion toward that wall. He's getting down on the ground, getting some great treatment here from the AMR safety crew. He is out of the car. They will make the mandatory trip to the infield care center to get checked out. A doctor that travels all the time with the AMR safety crew down there. Let's take another look at what happened. So the six car struggles and you have to wonder how that stacked up everything here. Kyle Busch gets in the back of the 12 and turns him around. 
Yeah, I mean, he just couldn't avoid, couldn't steer the car away from the, the direction it was going. I don't think there's anything Blaney could have done to change where this car was headed. Yeah, that all started way ahead of him right there. Oh, that is such a massive hit. Yeah. See, it started way in the front, and now it's just a stack up. Alex Bowman into the door of the eight right there. A little contact on the right front of this 48 car. Blaney gets off the brakes, trying to hope that that car is going to start to turn and he can correct it. This could have been a whole lot worse. You know, the car not being able to accelerate. Yeah, watch this. The angle of impact is what is bad about that wreck right there. Not even, it's not the speed of a car matters, but the angle of impact. And this is almost a straight head on impact as the car goes to the wall. Look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, look at the look at the left front and the right front. The right, they almost hit at the same time. And that is, that's how, this is very hard to absorb that energy. It, if it hits a glancing blow, it does not have near the G-forces, but when it's head on like that, it is it is a ton of G-forces. As you mentioned, Rick, NASCAR has done a lot to these cars over, last, over the last year to try to allow these cars to absorb these type of hits better, and we typically aren't seeing this type of damage with these, with these impacts, but now, as they have made some changes to both the front and the rear clip, that's the repercussions of it. You know, that's gonna tear up a lot more stuff. They're going to spend more money in repairs and so forth, but it allows the car to absorb these hits so the drivers don't have to. Well, we saw the six of Brad Kozlowski was the car that seemed to have a trouble going on the restart. Let's listen in. This thing does not go at all. It hit me so damn hard, I lost the shifter. Yeah, 10-4. So, so I guess so he like it's like his hand came off the shifter, like he got hit from behind, and he lost grip of the shifter. Well, it sounded like it started with his car doesn't accelerate, like it doesn't accelerate. He said it doesn't go, and because it doesn't go, he hit me so hard, and yes, then it knocked his hand off the shifter. But why won't it go? That's that's what I want to know. And I think that's what Brad Kozlowski wants to know as well. So this one happens. 36 still to go in stage two, but a big hit here for Blaney. You can download the official app of NASCAR. It includes free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as a radio broadcast. All you have to do, search NASCAR in the App Store, and you can start a free trial today. Sun setting here on Nashville, Tennessee. Still 34 laps to go in stage two, just past the halfway point of this race. As we look back from the Coke Zero Sugar pace cam, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin once again will try the restart. They fan out behind him. Door to door for the lead. Hamlin on the high side. Truex Jr. right along the yellow line. We saw a lot of this last year, Rick. This 11 car, Denny Hamlin and Truex battling all night long. And here they are again. Insert the 23 of Bubba Wallace in the picture as well. Denny fighting hard on that outside. A little side drafting there by Truex Jr. trying to slow down the 11. Denny shoots high here to get a good arc into the corner. Trying to catch up, make some good speed in the center. See that? That helped him a little bit through the middle of the corner. He's able to stay side by side. Down the back straightaway. Truex gets away from the 11, so he can't side draft. Now they're side by side, nose to nose. Still out there, a whole lane off you now. Still even top, quarter, still quarter, still quarter. Teammates being really competitive right here. Well, the other thing that's helping them is they don't have to worry about what's behind them. They can just focus on completely what's next to them. Don't have to look in the mirror at all. These restarts are insane. Three wide, now this two, two wide battle. Lap after lap, Truex again getting away from the side draft, goes back up the racetrack when they're nose to nose.
Truex nosing ahead, but then the 11 with the momentum on the outside. Almost a dead heat at the finish line. Danny drives it into one really deep right there. Truex to the center a little bit better. Oh, really tight off a of two. Back even win. Still just you and him. It <laughs> doesn't get any better than this. You hear the spotter say, just you and him. Still even one lane. This is awesome, okay. awesome. Been able to look out this window right at the 11 car trying to work on the outside here. The side draft from the 19. Pulls him forward. Truex noses ahead. Denny swings wide again. Tries that same entry into one. <laughs> yeah, the Truex can't clear him because the 11 of Hamlin's able to just go to the gas really well, and then he's going to clear him on the outside. Just be able to carry that momentum on that high line. And Truex can't stand it. Denny's up there like, yep, I got you. Truex wants to get back there and race him again. Take the spot back. Hamlin now has been out front eight laps of this race. Chastain's led the most at 54 laps. Truex Jr. was out front for 50. Watch what these drivers do. They, they, wherever Hamlin goes, Truex is going to try to go somewhere different. They're just, it's just a race for clean air. So Hamlin's trying to guess what Truex wants. He thinks Truex wants the bottom, so he's going to the bottom. Truex is forced to go to the middle. It's, it's a cat and mouse game. Yep. I'm going to try to take your line away, and I'm going to try to guess where you want to be. Now, Truex has got to try to surprise him a little bit at some point, and Hamlin will do the same. But there it is. Hamlin went to the middle. Yeah. Look at him driver down across the nose. So he sees in the digital dash. It's so clear. It's like looking at a TV screen. He sees where this 19 car is behind him and can take his car anywhere he needs to go to take that air away and block. I find that fascinating. I know for, for years it was a bit frustrating when these cars had them really tall rear spoilers of how much blocking for air that was going on. But it, they're so comp it's so close in speed that anything you can do yeah. to hurt your competitor it matters. I mean they just it's amazing how close in speed all these cars are. Oh, Bell to the outside of Ross Chastain here for position. That's for fifth. Yeah, the one in twenty. They're really close off of two. Hamlin with a two car length advantage. Now three car lengths in front of. Mark Truex Jr. and increasing while Ross Chastain trying to fight his way back up front. Chastain up to fifth, Bubba Wallace in fourth, William Byron in third. Good nine car, Chase Elliott with a good run on the 20 to the inside down the back straightaway. Noses up even into turn three. Chris Bell struggling just a little bit, lost the spot to Chastain. It's going to stay right here on the door of the nine down the front straight away. Christopher Bell fighting in that Toyota to get by the nine of Chase Elliott. About all, all the racetrack in the shade now with the sun headed down. Starting to change the temperature of this racetrack a little bit. Now. It's going to give these drivers more grip, more confidence to run down here on the inside like this nine car is doing right here. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver update as we have quite a few up here in the top six. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Bubba Wallace, and Christopher Bell all inside the top six. And Ty Gibbs back there in 13th. The gap between one and two has shrunk. It's down to a car length. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. throwing <laughs> it in low and a little loose. He dove it down in there. It's so funny, man. You can see it from right there how Trick's like, here we come, man. We're going to drive in there and see if we can fit in that hole. Then he closes it up. Another good race, this 43 car. He was really fast in practice. Eric Jones, he went out early in qualifying, and that really hurt him. But he has driven up through the field. He's sitting there racing for 10th position with Larson. They need a good run. It's been a tough year. Two top tens this year. He had five at this point last season. Dave, what you got? I wish I had three eyeballs right now. Watching all these great battles at Nashville has been fun, especially that battle for the lead. And it's interesting because Denny Hamlin asked for an adjustment from crew chief Chris Gabehart so that he could turn down in the corner. You guys talked about that move where he led a little bit to the outside and then arced it down into the corner. That was better after they made an adjustment on the 11, and that's how he took the lead. Kim? 
And Eric Jones running in the 10th position. The last two stops, they have made no changes on their race car. They felt really good in practice, just did not qualify where they wanted to. Too free in qualifying. And when I talked to Dave Ellens, the crew chief, they said they would be disappointed if they didn't finish top 15 today. But a top 10 would be a win for them. They were confident in their car and what their driver could do here tonight. Eric Jones breaking back into the top 10 as he runs in that 10th spot right now. Hamlin and Truex Jr. still fighting up front for the lead here at Nashville. Advance. In Advance Auto Parts. <laughs> I need that diehard power. And the reliability. And rugged durability, right? Yes. That's why diehards choose diehard. And Advance Auto Parts is the home of diehard. We'll even install yours for free. Yeah. Hey. Abuela? She makes some of the tomatoes. This is how we advance. Get a free ticket to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny when you spend $35 at Applebee's. Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. And this is ready to go online. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick survey. Who wants their internet to work pretty much everywhere? And it needs to run smooth, like super, 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 super smooth. Hey, should you be drinking that? It's decaf. Because we're busy women. We don't have time for a lag or buffer, right? Who doesn't want internet that helps AI do your homework even faster? Come again? Sorry, what was that? Introducing the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At PNC Bank, you can find us in big cities and small towns across the U.S., where our focus is to always support the people who live and work there. Because you call these communities home, and we do too. PNC Bank. Get a free ticket to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny when you spend $35 at Applebee's. Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. In Chicago, we take sports seriously. After all, we've seen just about everything. A curse lifted, six cups hoisted, and a dynasty. But there's one thing we haven't seen until now. NASCAR, right on the streets of Chicago. Next Sunday on NBC and Peacock. The NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 on NBC. Martrex Jr. fighting back as Denny Hamlin has been out front now for 15 laps. 22 in total, but after the battle between those two cars, Denny's still keeping that anywhere from one to three car advantage over the 19. News this week, Kevin Harvick wrote a letter to Josh Berry because we found out that Josh Berry is now going to be driving the number four for Stuart Haas Racing after Kevin Harvick finishes the season. We knew this was his final year. He's going to go to the broadcast booth, work for Fox Sports in the first half of the season. But as he steps away, the 47-year-old, 60 career wins, a certain Hall of Famer as he's got a championship as well. But what a career it's been, but that was the big news. The naming of Josh Berry will be behind the wheel of the four next year. Twenty one of Harrison Burton currently in the 18th position qualified 31st. Uh, really the bright spot for the season for this team has been Darlington. He ran finished six at Darlington. Uh, I really think it comes down to qualifying like to here today qualified outside the top 30. He slowly continued to improve just over 50 starts getting more and more comfortable I think in this series and this is another good example of it inside the top 20 at past the halfway and we've documented some of the other Fords that are struggling. So I think a decent run when you look at all the other Fords in the field. 
And Austin Cindric, Daytona 500 winner from last year, kind of a sophomore slump year. It's kind of normal. I don't know why. It seems like the second year is always tough. Austin Cindric today has spent 106 laps off the lead lap, but he got the free pass a little bit. He's got a fast race car. He's got good speed uh, driving up through the field right now in 20th. So I think as Austin is a, a guy we're going to see move up in this field as this race goes on. Justin Haley came into this race with a lot of expectations, qualifying third, an excellent qualifying run for them, but they have struggled. They're back in 23rd right now. His teammate, A.J. Allmendinger, is running in the top 10, but you got to have patience with this young man. He is an incredible talent, and this is a young team trying to build around him and his future. I expect him to become a winner on this circuit, if not a champion someday. Maybe not tonight, but it's coming. Well, a lot of us almost forget the fact that he is a winner already in the Cup Series. He won a, a rain short race at Daytona at a very young age. Uh, he is just 24 years old now. I'll tell you something, too, that, and we, we've talked about this a fair amount, but with such limited practice time, if you're going to commit to a young driver, I think you need to commit for a while. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard for them to get the experience compared to us. We ran... We ran enough practice like it's just crazy. I don't remember laps we had when we were developing. Plus, we had tests. It's just a different world now. Good little battle right here for fifth place between Toyotas, Christopher Bell, and Bubba Wallace. Dave, though, you've caught up with Blaney. Yeah, best side of the day so far, Ryan Blaney walking out under your own power from the infield care center. You okay? Uh, I feel better now. Uh, shame. And our night early, I thought we actually finally got decent there. Started the second stage, and um, I don't really know what happened. I, someone checked up on the restart, I guess, and I got, I kind of checked up and got hit from behind. I didn't know if they were wrecking, and I just couldn't get it straightened out. Um, when I got out of the grass, I thought it was going to come back around and I'd be okay, but it just never, never got back right. And uh, I don't know why there's no safety barrier there. It's pretty ridiculous, honestly. I've already said I've ever had in my life, so uh, happy to be all right. It sucks for the Pennzoil Ford Mustang, and uh, yeah, things go on really. That helpless feeling when you have been hit and you don't have any control, what is that like? Um, I, I honestly, I thought I was going to be fine. I, I really thought I was going to be okay once I got past the grass, back onto the asphalt. I thought I could, I could kind of swing back around when I got off the brake. Just never did. It was just at that weird angle, so... Yeah, I thought I could get back on straight until last second. Just never came back. Glad you're okay. Great to hear from Ryan Blaney. A very scary hit. He points out no safe for barrier. But, Rick, you pointed out safety updates to this next-gen car. Safety was a big conversation last year, right? Last year, like rear impacts. Um, you know, we saw some concussions from some rear impacts. So over the off-season, some updates. So let's take a look at our Toyota virtual car. We'll kind of go through the updates over the off-season. Starts at the back mostly. Uh, the rear bumpers, those yellow pieces, they're thinner. Thinner aluminum, so they would compress a little bit more. But the updates take more than just the bumper. If we go a little bit further, into the car we're going to take the rear clip off you see the red upper and lower bars the upper bar removed completely to allow this to co compress more down bottom it's replaced with a bar with a pre-bent area trying to give it a place for the for the force to go also the back of the car itself will get the gearbox out of the way the upper red bars once again removed unnecessary lower bars replaced with a thinner wall tubing they're needed the way the gearbox mounts on this car and then it continues even into this year we saw that big accident with Kyle Larson at Talladega with the rear, right side door bars moved around. The teams have the option of adding more gussets. You see the kind of wedge-shaped pieces between the bars. Well, here's some green ones. Those are now optional. You're allowed to add those as a team. Most teams have done it. And then at the front of the car, which is very important for Ryan Blaney, this red V. It was there for structure to hold the car, make it drive better. It's now not allowed. It's removed, allowing that front clip to compress. And actually, in a couple weeks, there'll be a whole nother set of front clip updates required for Atlanta so as Jeff likes to say safety is an evolution it never ends continuing to move there'll be more updates in a couple weeks thank goodness I mean you see how hard that hit is it is breathtaking continue to make adjustments to this car but those are everything that's been done between last year and now big hit there and Ryan Blaney uh, in the playoffs already after the win at Charlotte but Battle. it has been yeah it's been very difficult as we see Ross Chastain now Coming into this battle for the lead, he is 
one of the fastest cars on the track. We'll see if he has anything for Martin Truex Jr. as he's closed the gap between that second car. The final lap of stage two, so these guys are definitely trying to chew away at a few extra stage points, but I think Denny Hamlin's going to be able to close this one out unless Truex can mount a charge down here in three and four. Final time down the back stretch here in stage two. Ross Chastain, after starting on the pole, looks like the furthest he's going to be able to get up is going to be to third. A big run there for Martin Truex Jr., but just not enough. He'll finish second to Denny Hamlin here in stage two. Fourth stage win this year for Hamlin. Good job there, fellas. And remember, every stage win, you gain a playoff point. Those get put in the bucket and carried all the way through the playoffs as long as you are in them. You gotta wanna win. Tyler Reddick won stage one. And then the issue with the tire, but it's Denny Hamlin who's able to get out front and win stage two here at Nashville. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And by Ally. Do it right. Sun setting here at Nashville, Tennessee. As the teams have completed two stages and are now coming to pit road for this stage two break. Kim? And Martin Trex Jr. is saying he's having the same problem he's had most of the race. He's there top left. That is loose in, tight center, loose off. The crew asks him, what does he need most? Clean air. They'll say, we get clear track for you. That means a fast pit stop. Dave. Though Denny Hamlin was leading, he said, I still can't get it to the bottom in three and four without parking it. Air pressure adjustment. Marty. William Byron told Rudy Fugel, I need something different on these restarts. I have to turn much better if we want to compete on those. Ross Chastain, as the sun went down, the pace in the one car got better, and it picked up. Still a bit tight, history, but the exit is much better. Denny Hamlin holds serve here with the 11 team on pit road. Hamlin and Truex coming off of pit road, so that battle will continue. And once again, the 24's pit crew did a good job getting them a spot on pit road. Next Sunday on NBC and Peacock, NASCAR Cup Series racing on the streets of Chicago. Yeah, that's right. Coverage beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Cup Series. It'll be 4.30 on Saturday for the Xfinity Series. That's on USA. So many great views when you go to Chicago, see the skyline. And right now, Parker Kligerman is enjoying some of that skyline. And from a unique location, I believe you've got the fountain right there with you. Correct, Rick. That's Buckingham Fountain behind me. I've actually also been doused in it just here moments ago, the wind in the windy, windy city. But right here, as you mentioned earlier, is where the Peacock pit box is going to be. Right in this area, down in the center. It's like the heart of Chicago here in Grant Park. Then to the right, you can see how this is going to become the midway, where you can see all the event merchandise be sold here. Sort of different than what you normally see at racetracks with the haulers, right? And then as you shift back around, you'll notice all this space. Well, this is going to be the midway for the race because it's more than just a race. It's an event. There's going to be concerts here as well. Down, this will be the entrance to Grand Park to those concert stages with the likes of the Chainsmokers on Saturday, Miranda Lambert on Sunday, and I've just been told all the cup drivers will be a part of that show on Saturday with the Chainsmokers, but the winner of the Xfinity race is also invited to go hang out with the Chainsmokers. So I've decided, guys, I need to win this race on Saturday to go hang out with the Chainsmokers. And also, for many asking, if I win this race on Saturday, I'm going to that fountain. I've been told if I go right now, that's highly illegal. But come when NASCAR takes over this area over next weekend, it might be legal. When we went to the racetrack, A.J. Allmendinger also said that he, if he wins the race, he will also jump into the fountain. So you guys are going to fight for whoever gets wet there. Going to start a new tradition like kissing the bricks in Chicago. Jumping in the fountain. Getting ready for the restart to get the final stage underway. Denny Hamlin, Martin Trex Jr. We saw 
that great battle for multiple laps. Those two cars side by side fighting for the lead. Yeah, a little update here. The 23 car pitted running six came out 16, so did not have a good pit stop with 14 second pit stop. So he lost a lot of, a lot of ground. Just 108 laps remain from here in Nashville. Still up there in the top five, the one of Ross Chastain, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Mark Trex Jr. Back to racing. Denny had his eyes on that one car right there. You saw him trying to block any move that he thought Chastain, Chastain wanted to make. Clears Truex and Chastain off of turn two. Look at the racing back in the field. Cars jostling for position down into turn three. Ross Chastain trying to side draft Martin Truex Jr. Christopher Bale back there behind him. Christopher's been real impressive on restarts tonight, gaining more spots every time. And then behind them, that orange car, the old man out there, Kevin Harvick. 47-year-old <laughs> Kevin Harvick, that's right. He's driving through the field, passing the nine car, Chase Elliott for position. Chase trying to work back on the inside here. Harvick's got this Ford rolling. They don't really start races out really fast, but they improve as the night goes on, as the day goes on, getting better and better up to sixth place right now. Battle for second, top of the screen. It continues, Chastain on the inside. Martin Trex Jr. trying to use the momentum once again from the outside, but can't get an advantage yet. Dale, Jeff, you guys have talked about it time and time again, but there's no better, I think, view of it than these one and the 19 side by side those xfinity cars de so dependent on side force they were kind of unable to do that these cars the way they make the downforce underneath they can run lap after lap after lap right on each other's door almost contact right there we came right back to this one and 19 into turn three trux gets the advantage but fighting back on the inside is he going to be able to get up there no ross jastain tucks in behind the 19 now So Hamlin out front, and he continues to add to his laps led. He's been up front for 47 laps. The top three right now have led the most laps. 54 for Chastain, 50 for Truex Jr., and 47 for Hamlin. Talked about Bubba Wallace had a bad pit stop, trying to work his way through the field. Contact right there with Larson. Larson tried to turn down to plop that run. Man. I wanted to see the rest of that. <laughs> <laughs> Now Chastain has fallen back. He's three car lengths behind the 19. Somebody's worked themselves into the top 10 after having to start with a backup car. Number 99, Daniel Suarez in the eighth position right here. Tootsie's car. They were fast in practice, had a good flap going in qualifying, ends up bouncing his car off the fourth turn wall, has to go to a backup. I asked crew chief Travis Mack, how's this backup car? He said it's is good exactly like the primary here's his wreck here in qualifying and they've done a good job been smart methodical and worked their way into the top 10 after destroying that car marty from 34th junior as you mentioned welcome to the top 10 daniel suarez in that backup car and it's not been an easy run for suarez either they know they have the pace in the car and suarez has been frustrated a couple times sitting back in traffic having a car much faster than the guys in front of him but junior i love the word you mentioned methodical travis mack has been incessant on the radio to say to daniel hey be calm be patient you know you have the car how patient do you have to be working up through the field when you start all the way in the back junior great battle right here between the 43 and the 22 of logano eric jones working his way back up to the field logano had a great pit stop right there he hit a run in 17th came out about 13th and now has picked up a few more to get himself into 11 so good job by the pit crew and a good job by joey on the restart 
They struggle with the pace on this car on the racetrack. He was battling with Gibbs there a moment ago, but now lost the spot to the 43. It's old teammate, Brad Kozolowski, back there in 12th behind the 22. You just mentioned Ty Gibbs kind of right there in ninth, leading that back. He had a great car yesterday, kind of got taken out. Nothing of his own doing in the Xfinity Series race. And they're, you know, they're right around that battle for the playoff, the final few playoff spots right at the cut line of the bubble. They've got a great pit crew. Pit crew champions this year at North Wilsboro, third best on overall season average. I think that that right there and his continued improvement week in and week out, running ninth right now tonight, is going to easily help him point his way in if he doesn't win a race at some point this year to get to the playoffs. Well, remember, Junior, if somebody wins, that line moves, so it makes it even more difficult. Right now, he's just nine points back, but we would expect there's a possibility that we could have more than 10 winners that would advance into the playoffs. I have Ty Gibbs winning a race on my bingo card this year. Okay. I think he he's shown improvement enough. You know, I don't know if he, he's got quite everything put together to go up and drive past Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr., but we've seen crazy finishes, crazy races. I think he does a nice job of running all the laps, putting himself in position. It wouldn't shock me uh, if the driver of the 54 does go to victory lane at some point this year, Dave. In fact, you thought he was on his way yesterday in the Xfinity race, but uh, got crashed out of that one. As for Joey Logano, he's been fighting the balance a little back and forth, but uh, Paul Wolf, his crew chief, told me today these tracks have been a little bit tougher for their Ford this weekend, or this year. Uh, their win came in Atlanta where they're going back, so he is in the playoffs, but when it's a less than high-speed track, they just haven't had the same aero advantages that they might want to with this Mustang. So the perfect pit stop that you talked about, or the good pit stop, that's one of the things that has to happen. Paul said we have to be perfect on everything if we're going to win a race sun has gone down the temperature is going down as well which means a little faster racetrack a little more grip and the intensity is going to pick up under 100 laps to go from nashville when you look back on this day you might remember the heat wave or the kiddie pool that definitely looked bigger online or a burst of strawberry shortcake flavor and real strawberries swirled into an icy slush topped with vanilla ice cream and flurries of sweet, crunchy sugar crystals. Greg, however, will never forget the homemade water slide incident. Sonic 299 Strawberry Shortcake Snowball Slush Float. Mmm, Sonic. At PNC Bank, you can find us in big cities and small towns across the U.S., where our focus is to always support the people who live and work there, because you call these communities home, and we do too. PNC Bank. Advance? In Advance Auto Parts. <laughs> I need that diehard power. And the reliability. And rugged durability, right? Yes. That's why diehards choose diehard. And Advance Auto Parts is the home of diehard. We'll even install yours for free. Yeah. Hey. Abuela? She makes the best tamales. This is how we advance. Moving this summer? Join the 6 million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with pods. Save up to 30% off until July 10th. Whether you're moving across town or across the country, save up to 30% at pods.com today. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Don't miss your chance to race for the million. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. What a power move. Enter now for your chance to win a VIP trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway. Win in Phoenix. With the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR. And home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Beautiful day At Richmond Raceway, we race a little different. Pebble turn one, Bubba Wallace. We celebrate a little different. A win changes everything in this sport. We tailgate a little different. Even where we are is a little different. The only thing that isn't different is the amazing experience of being here for you and your family. It home, it's wins. the same as it's yeah, always boy. been. NASCAR weekend at Richmond Raceway. Get your tickets now at richmondraceway.com.
get more into the races with NASCAR Fantasy Live to compete. You just have to create an entry by picking five drivers plus a garage driver. You can keep tabs on your lineup and even make in-race adjustments to maximize your score. All you have to do, visit NASCAR.com slash fantasy to play. Still up front, it's Hamlin and Martin Trucks Jr. one and two separated by about a quarter of a second. A little further back in the field. And it hasn't been the season that Eric Almirola was hoping when he came back after discussing retirement a year ago. He was looking for Eric Almirola running 26th right now and only one top 10 this year. And I know the question has come up. Will he continue on or will maybe this year be his final year competing? Wants to spend a little more time with the family. But uh, Smithfield really pulled him back in behind the wheel. Uh, really like that relationship that they have with Eric. Well, the struggle at, at, for Eric really has been a Stuart Haas racing issue in general. The 14 of Chase Briscoe currently 31st in the free pass position. Big news out of this team this week is John Klossmeyer was replaced with this man, Richard Boswell. Richard and Chase have a success together in the Xfinity Series and won eight races together. This is for the first cup race for Boswell. Greg Zippendelli was asked about this. He's in charge of competition at Stuart Haas Racing, and he said, I think Richard Boswell's the right guy because he's going to hold Chase Briscoe accountable. Not that he isn't doing the right things, but somebody needs to make sure he has everything Marty he needs as a race car driver. Everyone needs oversight, and that's what Greg Zippendelli thinks Richard Boswell will bring the driver of the 14. And Steve, I found it funny on day two that Richard Boswell was Chase Briscoe's crew chief on the cup side. He sent him a text, and in the text, it was a kid and a tidal wave. The meaning, I'm drinking through a fire hose with all the information that I get on the 14 team and on the cup side as well. But he also said, we've taken some principles from our Xfinity Series days, and we've applied that to the cup series car. We'll see if it works. I think it will. You see in a lower screen, Austin Dillon, it's not really been a clean year. For Austin Dillon, five DNFs, they had that huge penalty. Uh, that's really hurt them in the points. Austin Dillon sitting there running 16th tonight, a solid run. His teammate right there with him on speed. So Austin and his team, they just need a turnaround, but they are definitely going to need a win if they're going to make the playoffs. Another driver is going to need a win to make the playoffs. This 41 car of Ryan Priest qualified 25th tonight, sitting in 21st position. Had a great run at Martinsville, got on the pole there, led 141 laps, but no top fives this year, no top tens. It's been a tough season for Stuart Haas, as we mentioned, but I think that they have the talent behind the wheel in all of their race cars. Just a matter of time before this team gets it going. We've mentioned the struggles that Ford has had this year. They're not immune to it as the battle for the league continues to heat up. Truex seems like he's a little quicker, just can't really find the clean air he needs. You can see him every once in a while getting some runs, taking some jabs, taking some jabs. Not ready to throw that right hook yet. Yeah, he he keeps searching. He'll go a little higher, about a half a car length higher than what Denny Hamlin will run. And then sometimes he'll duck down low and see if the lower line helps him gain any position. He's gotten all the way up to about a tenth of a second behind, but now drops back to about a quarter of a second. I feel like Denny Hamlin in this team I don't think they've gotten the finishes that represent how fast they've run. I feel like this is a little bit of an unappreciated team this year. They're really fast every week. Seems like they've had a lot of problems late in races, and it wouldn't surprise me to see them go win three or four before the playoffs start. Just have a lot of speed in this car. 82 remaining. They still have to come to pit road at least one more time as Denny Hamlin out in front of Martin Trex Jr. 82 to go. A couple NASCAR drivers, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ryan Blaney, and William Byron hit the golf course last month to work on their driving skills while the PGA Tour was in Charlotte at the Quail Hollow Club. Next week, the PGA Tour is going to be in Detroit. Coverage on Golf Channel and Peacock, June 29th through July 2nd. You know, you remember, U.S. Open champion Wyndham Clark won that event, uh, the Wells Fargo event at Quail Hollow. Aerial coverage brought to you by Pods. Moving this summer, save up to 30% at pods.com today. Under the lights now at Nashville Super Speedway. And the gap between one and two has stayed 
pretty similar to when we went away. Hamlin with about a three tenths of a second lead over Martin Trucks Jr. Now Chastain is still right in there in third. Harvick in fourth, quietly running in the top five. It was 75 laps to go. You see on the bottom left the final pit window. So if you stopped here, we believe you can make it all the way to the end on fuel. So everybody still needs a pit stop. 33 laps on this set of tires, 75 laps to go. We'll see when the gambling starts. Ooh. How about racing? Chastain uh, right up to the back bumper of Truex trying to take second away. <laughs> and he does it easily. We saw this at the end of the last long run. It seems like Chastain has really good speed. See right there, he just slid up. Said, you know what, Martin, you're not going to get back on the outside of me. It slowed the one car down, but it maintained his position to the 19. Now he stopped that advance from the 19. Now it's going to take the fight to Hamlin. But I think Chastain has a much quicker car than these two guys at this moment. Interesting choice of words there uh, between what you just said, Ross Chastain's going to take the fight to Hamlin. These two, it seems like every racetrack they go to, they're either banging doors or running into each other. So look what Chastain is doing here. He is lifting early. Watch Truex gains on him in the corner. But now Chastain goes to the throttle. He goes to the throttle soon, gives up some speed on corner entry, and that really helps this corner exit speed. We don't see that work a lot with this car, but on this racetrack, it has been effective. Denny looks in the mirror and he sees a new car behind him and a car that's closing. Denny now has to start to get on the de defense here. One car right up to the back bumper. A couple more car links here and he'll be there. Where does Denny go to try to take away that advantage, Jeff? The one down to the bottom in that clean air driving right up to him there. We've really pretty much officially shifted tonight. Big change in this racetrack in the last probably 20, 30 minutes. And it seems to suit this one car really well as he comes on in the long run here. Look at that. He just is able to run lower in clean air. Carries really good speed through the middle and the corner exit. Freeing up, but holding steady for Taking the higher line now as he has the momentum. Can he take the lead away? Did Denny go down there to try to defend what he thought the one would do? The one goes to the top now to the inside. Then he came down, wasn't able to block this run, and Chastain out front at Nashville. And up the racetrack, puts that 11 in dirty air right there. Then he can't finish the throttle, right? So that allows the one to drive away down the back straightaway. Marty. So the question coming into the night is which Ross Chastain would we see? The aggressive one from early in the year, the one who struggled for the last month and a half. I asked Phil Surgeon, his crew chief, about the off week. I said, did you guys do anything special? He said, it wasn't the off time, but I felt like we had a reset. It was actually a test at Bristol this week, and it allowed us to work differently. It allowed us to work at a slower pace, a lot of one-on-one -on -one face time. And Steve, I'm curious if you've ever sort of used a test as a reset with one of your drivers, Jeff Gordon, or Dell Jr. who's up there with you as a set to say, hey, let's do things differently moving forward. Well, absolutely. You know, we talk a lot about the young drivers and the lack of laps they get because of the lack of practice, Jeff, but also the driver crew chief relationship doesn't have the same chance to mature because it's 10 minutes of practice, qualifying a race. I mean, you are under the gun the whole time of the weekend. So a test session is a great time to, and to do just what Marty said. Just do it differently. A different pace, a different cadence. Sometimes, Rick, this sounds silly, a different goal. Sometimes you go to a test, it's sure. not about going fast. It's about learning something. Uh, it's a real opportunity, and it seems to be working for the one of Chastain, who, who's working on, he was catching the 78 of Balicki right there. Yeah, Josh Balicki just making his fourth start in the Cup Series this year as the one's going to get by him. And we see it heating up here between the 24 and 20. William Byron on the inside of Christopher Bell. Byron was fading back, but now it looks like Christopher Bell struggling even more. Kevin Harvick drove to fourth place, Chase Elliott fifth, but these two guys right here were kind of fading back. Wonder what's going on with Byron, Marty. He is just so free, Junior. He said he just has no grip anywhere, so he's begging for that pit stop, and those pit stops should be coming up pretty soon. Just way too free for William Byron, who restarted fourth, now he's in sixth. Steve had mentioned the pit window is open, so just 66 laps remaining in this race. They could make it to the end. And it's tough because new tires are better, but not dramatically better. So 
who's going to gamble and try to come early. Chastain now a one second lead over Denny Hamlin Martin Trex Jr. Harvick and Elliott all in the top five here at Nashville. And this is ready to go online. Any questions? Yeah I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick survey. Who wants the internet to work pretty much everywhere? And it needs to run smooth like super 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 smooth. Hey should you be drinking that? It's decaf. Because we're busy women. We don't have time for a lag or buffering. Who doesn't want internet that helps AI do your homework even faster? Come again? Sorry, what was that? Uh... Introducing the next generation 10G network. Only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Sometimes I feel like I just wanna... Chevy Silverado has what it takes to do it all. With up to 13 camera views. And the Z71 off-road package. Okay. Yeah. Any truck can help you make a living. This one helps you build a life. Chevy Silverado. Get a free ticket to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny when you spend $35 at Applebee's. Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Moving this summer? Join the 6 million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with pods. Save up to 30% off until July 10th. Whether you're moving across town or across the country, save up to 30% at pods.com today. The company goes to the firstborn, Audrey. The model train set is entrusted to Todd. Mr. Marbles will receive recurring deliveries for all of his needs in perpetuity, thanks to auto ship from Chewy. I always loved that old man. What's this say about the summer house? Yeah, the beach the house. The summer yeah. residence goes to Mr. Marbles. <laughs> Plot twist. I'm sorry, what? Doesn't make logistical sense. Unbelievable. Pets aren't just pets. They're more. You got a train set, Todd. Save more on what they love and never run out with auto ship from Chewy. The four was running fourth, and now with a right rear tire down, he is slow on the apron. Maybe will he get all the way back around? Well, and there was a cycle of green flag pit stops. People had started to come, but now with the four slow, they don't know where that tire carcass, if it'll come off the car. So green flag pit stops have ceased. No one is on pit road right now until they see this four safely get the pit lane. It looks like he's going to get all the way on. And as he does, I expect to see a bunch of cars follow him as we ride on board with the Hunt Brothers Pizza. You see flat right. I don't see a lot of damage anywhere, so I'm assuming you just had to run something over. That's heartbreaking because they were up to fourth place and challenging the 19, Kim. Yeah, and he came on the radio and said right rear, so brought it down pit road. Harvick's also said just a little bit loose in the back end, so detrimental to this team who was running so well, Dave. Chase Elliott comes in for his pit stop. He said the right rear feels a little proppy, but that's still better than it was the last run. He's gone. So it looked like one of the lug on that right side of the nine must have come off the belt of maybe the changer because it was sitting right next to the car when he came off of pit road as the 19 gets work done, Kim. And Martin firmly telling his team, I am still tight center, loose off, air pressure adjustment on four tires, so no fuel for Martin Trex Jr. Now it's basically how quick will Chastain and Hamlin follow. I can't imagine the one's going to stay. No, he's going to pit this time by. He knows he cannot give Truex multiple laps on fresh tires. Now it's up to the pit crew of the one. You see Hamlin right behind him at the top of your screen. 59 to go. If it goes green, this will be the last expected pit stop. Dave. Oh, the race on pit road. Who can get it? The JGR crew goes to work for Denny Hamlin. His car is just about where he wants it to be. Air pressure adjustment, if anything, Marty. Ross Chastain told me earlier this week, and I want to get better at telling Phil Surgeon what to do for an adjustment on the last stop. He said it's a little too free on exit. That's my biggest complaint. Four fresh figure tires and a quick stop by the one. Should cycle out still with the lead. All right, so the one is definitely out in front of the 11. We're looking to our left. Here's Martin Truex Jr. Already serviced his car he's going to go down into turn one newer tires on the left he's going to get in front of the 11 which i think is going to be a huge advantage for the 19 because i think he was getting held up by his teammate at times but the one of chastain has blended off in front of the 19 so as cycle continues chastain should be the leader let's check this gap right here I'm not going to give it a number. Big number. 30 <laughs> car lengths. I mean, that's a bigger gap than you had. So great job by the one team and the driver on and off pit road. 
that number one pit stall very helpful for Ross Chastain and their crew. They are in the top five of best average stops all year long. They were the best team last year on pit road by a long shot. So impressive stop when they needed the most. And Chastain's one of those drivers that has not been to victory lane this year, could add his name to the list of drivers into the playoffs. Running along the Hunt Brothers Pizza, we saw with Kevin Harvick and the tire issue. Oh, you hear it in such an awful spot. I guess it's better than the corner. I shouldn't say that, but at the start finish line, he had to run for an entire lap on that flat tire. You know, that's perfect. Oh, it's an awful spot because, well, it could have been the corner, you know, so I guess, you know, you take what you can. Dave. Christopher Bell is on pit road. He heard from his crew chief, Adam Stevens. We see what you are fighting. They have some data they can look at. They made a chassis adjustment for Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel. Joey Logano just in past them. That car has been struggling. Most recently, the car was a little bit tight for Joey Logano. They'll get four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel as well. As you see on the left, Keselowski, Bush, Bowman yet to pit, Gregson. They know they're losing time to Chastain, but for these guys, the call is to probably run all the way out till it needs fuel and hope you get a yellow. Um, you know, try to catch a break, try to improve the day. Keselowski out front. Again, has to come to pit road. Kyle Busch running second right now. Alex Bowman third. Noah Gregson fourth. I thought they would run Keselowski. longer. Yeah, nope. I thought they would run longer, but nope, they're going to pit right now, Kim. And Brad complaining of tight through the center. Just a little loose off, but needed help on that tightness of the race car. Chief Matt McCall telling him do not speed here. This should be the last stop of the night. We do not need to put ourselves behind anymore. Clean stop for the six as we see the 20 of Bell trying to stay in front of that eight of Kyle Bush. Bush still needing to come to pit road. He was last on pit road at lap 188. 60 laps ago. How long will they stay out, Steve, or would you think that they'd want to stay out? Well, this is 56 Push laps. It. I would go all the way to the end. I mean, if, if you're going to run long, you might as well run completely. Long. Like, don't be stuck in the middle. Either be on the front half of pit stops or be one of the last cars. That's why I was a little surprised by the six. So I think Bush right here is going to run probably another 10 or 12 laps, I would imagine, is what they're thinking here. Same for Bowman and Gregson. You see a little bit on the left side, the, the splits. You see Chastain and Truex. You know, still fourth and fifth, Hamlin sixth. They'll cycle to the front. Will that be a situation if they get to Gregson? The second he gets passed by Chastain, would that indicate, hey, I need to come to pit road well, now? So two things. Getting passed, it's really just for, you know, it's just for position. It's not a lap. So a couple things go into this. I also have a predictive software that says where they'll blend back on the racetrack, and you don't want to get blended back into a big clump of traffic. So, you know, when I think of just time, you know, lost or gained, these guys have some very predictive programs letting let them know what's the best time to come to pit road. You see on the left, Gregson has come to pit road. Now it's just Bush and Bowman that are in front of Chastain, who has already been to pit road. Chastain's teammate. Daniel Suarez has Tootsies as their sponsor on the side and the hood of the car and one of the many entertainment spots here at Nashville. IndyCar Series Racing returns next weekend to the natural terrain road course at Mid-Ohio. Coverage on USA and Peacock at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. You know, Alex Pillow has won three of the last four races. He's going to try to make it four of the last five. NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 on NBC. And right now, Kyle Busch is being scored the race leader. He still has to come to pit road. Busch and Bowman are both still out on the racetrack and have to come to pit road for their final stop as we take a look at the playoff bubble and I'll focus in on the 23 of Bubba Wallace 27 points up again that line could change uh, if for example Chastain wins uh, 
because of the fact that Chastain hasn't locked himself in yet. That will just change as far as the points, how far they're above. But right now, Bubba Wallace, what a strong run he's had here in Nashville. Uh, currently above that playoff line. Would love to see his opportunity continue for a championship. Yeah, Alex Bowman, the first car in, basically currently sitting 16th, says plus 14, but you have to remember he's currently in second. A pit stop still to come, so that's going to hurt the, the 48th point situation. But to think that this young man had to miss three races with a broken back, um, I think it's remarkable that they're even in the conversation of getting in on points. So that has to be, while at times disappointing, I could look at it as a positive that they're running good enough with three zeros in the column Alex Bowman still has a chance. Things heating up as Martin Shrex Jr. has closed the gap just a bit, and Ross Chastain now has to work around lap traffic. Kyle Busch has come to pit road. Let's move these two guys up to second and third. Bowman still on the racetrack. Yet to make his pit stop, but this will be the battle for the lead if we continue. Cindric moves up the racetrack, and both the 1 and 19 go down to the yellow. Oh, look at this. Almost missing pit road is Kyle Busch. And a close call there is Suarez. Just missed the eight. Well, that's that's getting all you can on pit road. You give Kyle Busch a lot of credit. Pushed all the limits. I don't know how he could have gotten in any faster than that. I feel like the the one car of Chastain, he caught the two of Cindric. cindric has got a fast race car. He had a trouble getting by him. And that allowed Truex to gain just a little bit, but now I feel like Chastain's driving away just a little bit. Remember him being strong, Chastain being really strong on the long run of this, the run before this, right? Drove up through there, took the lead. And now, as we get into this run further, do you think that Truex has made the adjustments to be able to match anything the one's doing late in the run? Trix has closed it in on closed in on him. He'll run a lap that's faster than the one will outrun the 19. It's kind of back and forth right now. Traffic though, a lot of cars right there in front of them. All of that's going to make things challenging for both drivers. Let's take a look at the progressive telemetry. Watch the miles per hour down the back straightaway. You heard him shift gears to fifth gear right there. 174 miles an hour. Some brake. Use a lot of brake at this track. You wouldn't think that a big old racetrack like this with this much baking, there's not a lot of grip in the corners. Guys, I'm going to lean on this telemetry right here for Progressive next week in Chicago to figure out what gears and what corners, right? Street course we've never seen, just no history about where they're going to be shifting. Truex, get close right there. This dirty air from that lap traffic is going to make things tough for the one. It's going to present opportunities for Martin. What is Martin learning right now, running behind this one? Is he watching him? Is he seeing the lines that he's running, trying to figure out where he can take advantage of the different lines that Ross Chastain takes? Well, Martin knows where his car needs to be better, right? And he's watching Chastain saying, okay, where is Chastain's strengths and where are my weaknesses? To direct his team, if he gets another change, what to do to the car. But if you don't get another change, what can I do as a driver to try to influence my car to get the little bit of speed that I need? Laps winding down. 36 to go from Nashville. Martin Truex Jr. running second. Ross Chastain out front. When you look back on this day, you might remember the heat wave. Or the kiddie pool that definitely looked bigger online. Or a burst of strawberry shortcake flavor and real strawberries swirled into an icy slush topped with vanilla ice cream and flurries of sweet, crunchy sugar crystals. Greg, however, will never forget the homemade water slide incident. Sonic 299 Strawberry Shortcake Snowball Slush Float. Mmm, Sonic. Advance? In Advance Auto Parts. <laughs> I need that diehard power. And the reliability? And rugged durability, right? Yes. That's why diehards choose diehard. And Advance Auto Parts is the home of diehard. We'll even install yours for free. Yeah. Hey. Abuela? She makes some of tamales. This is how we advance. From big cities 
to small towns and on main streets across the U.S., you'll find PNC Bank, helping businesses both large and small, communities, and the people who live and work there grow and thrive. We're proud to call these places home, too. They're where we put down roots and where together we work to help move everyone's financial goals forward. PNC Bank. People couldn't see my potential, so I had to show them. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. Today, I'm the CEO of my own company. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. Why are we not rethinking this? I am more, I'm more than, than who I am on paper. You know that frustrated feeling you get when you're in the, on the interstate in the left lane and the guy doesn't get over for you? Well, right now, Ross Chastain has said, get out of the way. I've got people behind me. Ross Chastain, the leader. Mark Trex Jr. running second. And Ross Chastain trying to knife his way through this traffic. It's allowed this 19 to get right to him as they go by the 47 of Stenhouse. Little bobble from the 19 there. Up the racetrack he goes. Mark Trex Jr. also trying to get by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. so he can keep the fight up with Ross Chastain. He's closed the gap. Mark Trex Jr. looking a little stronger right now than Chastain. More lap cars in front of them, but they're spread out. They'll be hard to pass, hard to get to, dirty air. Truex way up the racetrack. Stenhouse back to the inside. Big run down the front straightaway, though. Trix keeping that gap the same between him and the leader. Trix, I think, is just a little bit better. Three Eight. tenths of a second the gap. Now down to 23 one hundredths. I feel like Truex knows that one car on a long run is a, has been a little better most of the night. And if you are going to beat him, you need to try to find a way around him with 29 to go. That's a really interesting line that Truex is running. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but the last couple times in turn three, really, really high up into the white, out of the groove, and then turning down, coming across the bottom of the racetrack on corner exit, trying to find out some way to get some momentum down the front straightaway. He just decides in the middle of the corner which way to go, and it fucking goes. There you have it. So he's talking about the one watching in the mirror. Martin goes into the corner and the one goes wherever he's at, right? The one is trying to find wherever the 19 is in the mirror and drive and take that air away. That is the one's only defense when he is not the faster car. That's the only way you're going to be able to hold a guy behind you. Take his air? Yeah. It's really fun to watch this one try to do that and Martin try to catch him off guard somehow, some way in traffic. That's what's great about the lap traffic is that same problem that the one's trying to create for Martin, the lap traffic will create that problem for the one car. Jeff, you mentioned earlier Ross Chassain entering the corner a little bit different, backing the corner up. Is Martin Shrex Jr. learning anything from that and maybe trying to maybe change his style going into the corner so he can close the gap? I don't feel like Truex has tried to slow his corner entry up. I think Truex is just focused on not being in the lane that the one car is in, just be somewhere that he isn't. I feel like that's Truex's goal right now. He's not really changing you know, his corner entry speed the way we saw the one car did earlier. One thing I find interesting, the last concrete racetrack that we ran was Dover. Truex won, Chastain second. So something about concrete and these drivers and teams they like. Again, oh. Chastain changed his mind after he got into the corner and Truex Jr. had to slow down. They're having a hard time getting to Eric Almarola. Eric's running the bottom, giving them plenty of room at the top of the racetrack. Here comes the one. He wants to get to the outside of that 10, can't do it. We'll see if he goes to the inside now, the 10 all the way down to the yellow line. Chastain is going to go high. We'll take a quick break. You won't miss a thing. Things heating up. 24 to go from Nashville. 
You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Don't miss your chance to race for the million. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. What a power move. Enter now for your chance to win a VIP trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway. Win in Phoenix. With the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR. And home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is ready to go online. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick survey. Who wants their internet to work pretty much everywhere? And it needs to run smooth, like super, 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 super smooth. Hey, should you be drinking that? It's decaf. Because we're busy women. We don't have time for a lag or buff, right? Who doesn't want internet that helps AI do your homework even faster? Come again? Sorry, what was that? Uh... Introducing the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Get a free ticket to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny when you spend $35 at Applebee's. Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. You think you know fun? Well, let me introduce you to our kind of fun. The kind of fun that just hits right. The kind of fun that's for the kids. The kind of fun where you wake up at the track. It's the kind of fun you can only have at New England's NASCAR race. The Grand 301 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. It's a wicked fast, wicked fun weekend full of racing, camping, and friends. July 14th to 16th. Get your tickets today at NHMS.com. AGT, we come to party tonight! How much fun are we having? Ah! Season 18 is just blowing my socks off. I think great things are going to happen. America's Got Talent, followed by Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge. New Tuesday on NBC. Under 19 laps to go in the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400 here on NBC. Ross Chastain, we saw how he had to deal with the slower lap traffic. He decided, I'm going right through the middle. Thread the needle. Car side by side right here in front of him. They kind of opened up a little bit. He says, I'm going in right to the top, right on the outside of the 10, Al Eric Almirola. 48 back there on new tires has went around all of these cars, but you see what it does. It puts three lap cars between the leader, Chastain, and the 19 of Truex, and that's allowed Chastain to get this healthy lead with just a few laps to go in this race. Marty. Let's go through the field, Junior, and there was a lot of conversation after Darlington. Did Justin Marks, the owner of Trackhouse Racing and the boss for Ross Chastain, have a conversation with him to slow down or change his game? He said that conversation never happened, he told the media today. The conversation that did happen, hey, let's not waste the opportunities we have to win because winning is so hard. We need to win right now, and they're 17 laps away from doing it, Kim. At this point, Martin Truex Jr. just very frustrated, came on the radio to his team almost in an annoyed voice saying, tight center, loose off. He's told that to his team half a dozen to ten times throughout the race. Nothing seems to have alleviated that problem. He also said no tires left. So Martin Truex Jr. just looking for more, Dave. Denny, Hamlin, Denny Hamlin's uh, Kansas win has him in the playoffs, but that decision to put him a lap later than Truex has him back from second to third and four seconds behind the lead. It just hasn't been as good back here. As for the nine of Chase Elliott running in fourth position, he's got to win a race. Yes, there's a mathematical way that he can get to the playoffs, but having missed seven races, he's got to win one of the next nine. It's probably not going to be this one today running fourth. Marty? Day for his teammate, William Byron, who leads the championship standings. The summer has always been a tough stretch for the 24 team. Rudy Fugel told me the tracks are all different. They don't apply to the playoffs. So what we want to develop is just consistency tonight. They haven't had winning speed, but they've kept it in the top five the entire time. An impressive run, Kim. And when I talked to crew chief Cliff Daniels about the five car and what they've needed and what they've lacked, he said, we've just been hemorrhaging points the last handful of races. We have to course correct that. Right now, Larson running in the sixth position. They've worked on that car all Right now, though, I can't open my entry. Too tight loading. I don't have grip to run and pace the track, Dave. Chris 
Officer for Bell's crew chief Adam Stevens told me that after practice, they had to do some soul searching before they went qualifying, and they think they found a little bit more in the 20 car. And they certainly did. He started 20th and was running up in the top five, but it hasn't been good the second half of the race. He's seven. Him. For the 43 of Eric Jones, they have made no adjustments on that race car the last handful of stops. And if you look at their intermediate program, they have had speed at those type of tracks. When I talked to crew chief Dave Ellens, he said they are in such a hole with their point situation. It's been a combination of things, partly their fault, partly bad luck. They have got to break the cycle right now. They look to be doing that currently in the eighth position, Eric Jones. Thanks, Kim. Dave, Marty, great job getting us through the field. And Steve, you made a comment earlier about Ross Chastain's wins. One of them came at Talladega, another one came at Coda. So a road course and a super speedway. Is this type of a win, does this put Ross Chastain in a different category in your eyes? Absolutely. Set, sits on the pole, first career pole, and then if he can win at a track like Nashville, while this doesn't look like other racetracks, it's concrete, it's a mile and a third, it's still the concept, right? This is the aero package, the engine package. This is what we see for the majority of these high-speed racetracks, and I think this is going to be a huge confidence booster. Nashville, while it doesn't look like other racetracks, it's a pressure cooker for track house because this is kind of their home racetrack. So when you can come when the pressure's on and perform, which we saw Chastain do in the playoffs, last year with that move at Martinsville I think this is the you know the boost of confidence that could really make a difference and these two guys are literally running the same lap time the last time by so without some big go gobble of lap traffic for this one car to navigate if he just kind of drives a very sharp corner in a smart race lap after lap with 10 to go Truex doesn't have much of a shot here this one this one car really strong on the long runs all night getting better and better as the sun went down in the night the track cooled off sort of equalized this 19 car and all the toyotas the toyotas have been really strong over the last several weeks here's a chevrolet out front late again at nashville just like last year that's what i was gonna say it's like national 2.0 right toyota's great but just can't seem to find that last little bit at the end truex gotta keep the pressure on right here though you never know what can happen it's got to Keep that one Chastain looking in your mirror. Right rear is smoked. Right rear is smoked. So what he's saying is that he pushed really hard in the run, was leaning on that right rear tire, trying to get the car to turn, and now it doesn't have grip. And now he's too loose to go to the throttle and be as aggressive with his car as Chastain. And that's been the strength of the one car. If, you, if, if Chastain could just maintain pace with everybody early in the run, he's been better on later in the run that's exactly what Truex tried to do. He tried to beat him early, and now he's eating the tires off of it. Watch the steering wheel down there that Truex got a hold of through this corner. Yanking it around, fighting on that steering wheel, trying to keep the back underneath him. Not much you can do to help a driver when he's fighting a race car like that, but I can promise you that one car is not driving all that great either. Everybody's out there on their old wore out tires. Everybody's got some sort of a balance issue they're dealing with. That's hard to hard for Truex to hear at this point. Yeah, 50 laps right now for Chastain and Martin Truex Jr. I think for the for the 19, he's got one more push in him, right? We look at coming to six to go, and there's a kind of a little group of cars just in the middle of the one and two right now. And I just wonder when the 19 is going to or excuse me, when the one and the 19 are going to catch this group of cars. One of those being that 38 of Todd Gilliland. He'll be the next one that they catch up to. Joe Logano and the seven car of LaJoy. Little contact right there. Down into turn three as they'll go, they go around the 38 car. These cars are the ones you're talking about, Steve, that are in front of the leaders. The leaders are running them down. Not sure they're going to get there with five laps to go for next time by. And we saw Bowman's one of those cars. We saw Bowman stay out forever, so he's got a little better tire. So he's pushing the issues on these guys, Marty. 
Jeff, if this holds out for five more laps for Ross Chastain, he admitted in the media center earlier this week, I take heart to heart what people say about me, sometimes to his detriment. But if this does hold out and they do win, how dangerous could this team be? Because we know a confident Ross Chastain could be a guy who could win a championship. What do you think, Jeff? I don't think there's any doubt. I, I think that Ross Chastain almost won it last year. I mean, he had a good shot last year. I think a confident Ross Chastain is very dangerous. And this team, I don't think it's been as good as last year. I think they've been off a little bit on pace, but this run shows them they can do it. Last push coming from this 19 car. Has he got anything left? Three laps to go. He made up about three tenths of a second. I noticed he's just a little bit quicker and he's really driving his car deep into the corners. Can he get to the throttle right here off of two? We're in that the tires are wearing away on him. If he has a chance, it's going to have to happen here real soon. Coming up on two laps to go. He's found a little something right there in that middle of three and four. Just not enough. Two more times around. Ross Chastain making it a, an historic weekend for Trackhouse Racing. They gained their first pull yesterday. It was his first pull in the Cup Series. Trying to close it out. He's led the most laps today at 97. And adding to that, Martin Trex Jr. trying to keep the momentum up. One lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. White flag. Hit your mark. Justin Marks and Pitbull put this team together. A year ago, both teams were able to win both cars with Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain. And as you mentioned, made a run for the championship, was in that final four pairing. Now he's going to have another shot at it. A win here at Nashville for Ross Chastain puts him in the playoffs. It's a good place to do it here in Nashville. <laughs> And guys, that was a clean race. I yeah. mean, so many times people have said, oh, Ross runs us a little bit hard or maybe a little too aggressive early. But from start to finish, that was a very clean race for Ross Chastain and a dominant performance. 99 laps led today. And that emotion right there is what you want to hear from people when they win races. Oh, there's some contact right below Ross on pit road. Looked like the 99 of Suarez was trying to go see Hey to his teammate, high five him. I'm not quite sure. Ross doing his burnout down here, but you love to hear that emotion, how happy he is to win this race. Every race matters. You never know when you're going to win that last race. To hear that emotion out of him is incredible. Well, that checkered flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Here's what you were talking about. There's the contact. The 14 got into the 99. I think Suarez had some intention of going up there and, and cheer, you know, cheering on his teammate or something, but it's been that kind of year for Briscoe. Yeah. And this checkered flag moment right here brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. A good long burnout in front of the crowd here, a sold out crowd. Ross Chastain. This feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Giving that crowd a great show. It's a great crowd. Getting a good burnout. Look at all the parts of the tire laying on the track smoking. 
A reminder NASCAR America post race. That is on NBC and Peacock until 11 p.m. tonight. Well, the right front's down. I don't know how many how many millimeters of tread are left on these tires, but what a burnout and what emotion we have seen out of Ross Chastain. His third career win. It locks him into the playoffs, and he's going to come out the hatch. Ross Chastain, the family, watermelon farmers, and the celebration of smashing a watermelon about to take place. Marty. On top of the watermelon smash, it's a hometown Nashville win for Trackhouse Racing. Who likes to claim Music City as their hometown? Boy, Ross Chastain, what an impressive performance by you and your group. And have a little water. Go ahead. After a rough month and a half for you and the one team, How's a win for a little medicine? Only thing sweeter, Marty, is this Georgia watermelon. I got to tell you, this is incredible. Um, this is why every little kid out there, anywhere in the world, when you get criticized, and you're going to if you're competitive, they will try to tear you down. You will start believing them. You can't do it. You have to go to your people, trust in the process, read your books, trust the, the big man's plan upstairs, and just keep getting up and going to work. I got to tell you, a lot of, uh, of self-reflection through all of this, but I had a group that believed in me, and they didn't let me get down. And they bring rocket ships, and I just try to point them to victory lane. So you mentioned the criticism. How did you put it behind you, Ross? Trust in my people, uh, my family back home, the agriculture industry, they're always there for me. And then everybody at track house that Justin Marks puts in place with Phil Surgeon and our group on the 1 in 99. Uh, to win in Nashville is actually absolutely incredible. And then uh, the, the WISE program and everybody at GM, Chevrolet, um, you know, it's uh, – we train. I train with so many of my competitors, and uh, but it makes us better. And uh, I'm up against the best out here. So for everybody at Worldwide Express Racing, and sweep the weekend with Carson Host of our Nice Motorsports. Uh, get the pole. We won everything we could have with, with Wex Racing. And for Advent Health, Jockey, the Moose. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible, um, the fight that we have. I love the emotion in the burnout. And you said in the middle of it, this is so much fun. Is that born out of relief, or where did that come from? That's just a desire to win. I got to tell you, Marty, it's um, it's just so hard at this level, and and it's it's the best of the best, and it's where I've wanted to be since I was 18 years old, and from from studying for over 10 10 years to just to qualify better, let alone go race for a Cup race win. Um, you know, along the way, the journey. I'm so so happy that the MMI group's here, and uh, and everybody that that supports me. Um, yeah, look, it's a cup win. I don't care what happened the last month, the last my rest of my life. It's a freaking cup win! There you go, Ross Chastain started the weekend with his first career poll. He ends it with his first win of 2023, and now he's in the playoffs, Rick. <laughs> and he's going to keep taking care of that watermelon. Again, the NASCAR America post-race show. The coverage continuing until 11 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. <laughs> Went down the wrong pipe. Checkered flag in one hand, watermelon in the other. All smiles for the one team. Grabs his third career win. Burns it down. And that burnout comes out the roof hatch. 
and then smashes the watermelon again. Ross Chastain wins at Nashville. Go places. My son never show mercy. They are prey. We are predators. Creepin' the Hunter. Watch the full trailer online now. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. The NASCAR America post-race show presented by Progressive. Under the lights, and I believe this is a statement win for Ross Chastain in front of a sold-out crowd here at Trackhouse Racing's home racetrack. And the crowd really got a show today. At one point in time, we saw three wide for the lead for multiple laps. Multiple times we saw two wide for the lead for multiple laps. And in the end, it was Ross Chastain. And that number one team got him off the pit road quickly out in front. Was able to fight off the battle that Martin Trucks Jr. put to him. And now he's going to celebrate in victory lane. Now let's go to the Peacock Pit Box with Marty, KP, and DJ. Well, welcome in, guys, with the Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett, Kyle Petty. I'm Marty Snyder here on the Peacock Pit Box. A little post-race show for you. Boy, I guess, DJ, we don't have to ask the question which Ross Chastain's going to show up at the red track <laughs> anymore, do we? Nope. He told me yesterday I was going to see Ross Chastain here tonight. Uh, and, you know, he, very emphatic. We were yeah. just having a conversation. And I said, you know, haven't, haven't seen you. The normal Ross in, in a few yeah. races. And I said, you know, what are we going to see? He said, you're going to see Ross. And uh, we saw that. Uh, car was good. Obviously, he won the pole. Uh, but it, it really did come to life. I, I think the, the Toyotas, uh, especially of Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr., I think they tightened up a little bit as it got cooler. Yeah. Their cars were really good when it was a little slicker. Uh, they were maybe the class of the field at that time. But great win for Ross Chastain. You know, we've been looking for this kind of performance from him, and he put it on tonight. Yeah, I think we saw, we saw a glimpse of the old Ross, but I thought I think we saw a glimpse of a new Ross, yeah. um, a thinking man's driver, a yeah. thinking driver. I think, and, and I think we saw that, and I, I think we saw that when he would catch traffic. He wasn't overly aggressive with traffic. He waited for traffic. He waited for it to come to him. The most aggressive move he made was when he split uh, the 15 car and, and and the 10 car of, of Eric Almarola to get away from the 19 car of Martin Truex. But I think that I think that reflection that he spoke to you about at yeah. post race, I think. That's what he's talking about. He's more of a thinker now. He's headed in that direction. He pulls in right beside us to victory lane. That was Justin Marks, the team owner of Trackhouse Racing, who popped in there in the window. I want to go back to that comment he made to me a second ago, Kyle, and about the, the putting the criticism behind you. He he wanted to make that statement. Wait a minute. You didn't. Hey, Marty said, "How's the weather?" And he said, "I'm putting it, I'm putting the criticism." I mean, he did not answer the question. He he went off with his own statement, and that showed. And, and I made a note right here. That's been on his mind. That's been on his mind since he was criticized at Darlington, since all that's happened over the last few weeks. That's the one thing that's played on his mind. And now that's out from under his skin. It's done. He's thrown it out there. He's dealt with it. He's dealt with it with his family. He's dealt with it with his crew. He's dealt with it with the public now. And he's dealt with it with these other competitors today because he showed them the kind of driver that Ross Chastain can be. Yeah, you know, there's not an, an athlete, a competitor, Competitor, someone that that does their business in front of people, um, and, and you compete for a living. Uh, that that hasn't been through times that were more difficult, and that you got criticism. 
and now with social media and opportunities for more people to chime in and if you choose to look and listen uh, to what people have to say um, then you're going to have to figure out a way to get around it because the greats all figure out a way to not let that bother them you might let it bother you for a split second but you got to realize that you're the one that has the talent out here to, to get the job done and I think that's the one thing that Justin Marks Ty Norris and his people have been telling him hey you, you have the talent to do this get your head right and you're exactly right Kyle Petty you we saw a different driver in, in certain situations yes. that we hadn't seen in the past because he would push the envelope in other times and not saying that we're not going to see that sometimes whenever he deems it necessary but he realized the car that he had tonight that he could pick and choose when he needed to do that here is how the uh, playoff standings shape up after the nashville race tonight and uh, william byron still atop with his three wins had a solid night tonight but now you see the name in yellow ross chastain would be the fifth seed at this point already 10 playoff points and kyle i want to go back to oh and look at the cut line by the way before we get away yeah. from the playoff points yeah. look at that daniel suarez and alex bowman and ty gibbs man 10 points tight separating three tight, that is tight, going to be tight. crazy <laughs> <laughs> over the next nine races, and A.J. Allmendinger had a nice run tonight as well. Yes, I mean, he you did. can go back to 20th there with Michael McDowell, only 27 now. I want to go back to your comment, and uh, we should have Ross Chastain up here with us in a moment about a new Ross Chastain. Yeah. You know, the, the comments last year got to him. It was evident. He drove differently. He made the, the championship four based on the incredible move at Martinsville that we talked about and, yep. and still talk about. But I sense this is more than a Nashville win, Kyle. I oh, sense yeah. this is, for this team, this kind of propels them over some sort of hurdle. It's like, and, and, and I'll, I'll use a baseball analogy, okay? We knew Ross Chastain was a fastball pitcher. We knew he could bring the speed. He could bring the heat. Tonight, we saw him become a pitcher. Hmm. He's got the, he's got a curve. He's got a change up. He's got a different, different set of tools that he can work with. And that gives this team a ton of confidence, a ton of confidence to know that their driver can go out on a mile and a half racetrack, to know that their driver can go out on a road course. We've seen that to know their driver can go out on a speedway and win races and do it in a way where nobody's pointing fingers, nobody's booing, nobody's screaming and nobody's criticizing and and I think that that speaks volumes for this team and I, I think this takes this team to a legitimate a legitimate threat for a championship yeah I mean in a sense even though there's tremendous pressure to perform every week pressure's off in one sense you're in the playoffs now even though he knew he had a nice points cushion it's always nice to have that win and you don't want to go into the playoffs chasing that win yeah. uh, and so now he realizes the team realizes they they can win. Uh, they can win at a difficult racetrack. And this wasn't something that anything that happened tonight throughout the rest of the racing uh, that allowed Ross Chastain to win this race. He went out and, and won the race by being the best driver and best car here tonight. Denny Hamlin winds up finishing third. Boy, the Toyotas look strong today, but just didn't have enough for Ross Chastain. A moment ago, Dave Burns caught up with Denny Hamlin. With any one laps led today, it sure looked like Denny Hamlin could be the one in victory lane today. Where'd the car go there at the end? Uh, you know, the field's just so close, and everyone's running the same times that it's really hard, and it's track position. But we, I just think we had, a, you know, a third-place car. Really, you know, uh, the entire race, I thought the 19 was a little better. Um, the one obviously came on strong there at the end, and uh, that's all we had with our FedEx Crown uh, Toyota. So, um, it's an optimized day. It's, it's a day with no mistakes, and we just uh, we gave ourselves a chance. Just didn't have quite quite a fast enough car to go up to contend. When it looked like you did, you were racing your teammate uh, Martin Truex pretty well there. How would you describe that racing? Because here at Nashville, uh, we come come to expect that now. Yeah, I mean, it's the the side by side is really just because both guys know that whoever gets out front is just going to set the pace and can't give it up. No, you can't, and um, you know, it's just. <laughs> With everything being the same on the cars, it's just the track position just means more than anything. So you got to just battle, and you know we saw some great three wide racing there early on, on those restarts. But uh, yeah, just wish I had a little more speed. Uh, that's what we needed. Nine more races, Denny, till we get to the playoffs. You're already in with the Kansas win. What do you need out of your weeks coming to that? Really, weeks like this. I mean, where you know nothing crazy goes on, and we just uh, we optimize our day. Uh, we're, we're usually going to find ourselves with a shot to win most weeks, as, as long as we don't make any mistakes and keep our track position. And that's what we did today. 
Martin Trucks Jr. comes home in the runner-up position. I know you were frustrated with what the car was giving you. At one point, frustrated with teammate Denny Hamlin. What needed to go differently, especially during that last stage? Just needed to get the lead, you know. I mean, once we lost it, I, I probably made a bad move taking the bottom on a restart and then just um, too loose in the long runs. You know, I could hang with whoever was leading. Um, just could never get off the corner good enough to make a move. Just lacking side bite and then overall just uh, burning the rear tires off too much. Um, just really loose at the end of the race there as well. So just needed a little bit. Um, got lots of speed. Just could never get the balance where it needed to be. And, uh, you know, without without having clean air, it was uh, it was difficult. So overall, good night for our Bass Pro uh, tracker. Toyota Camry uh, guys are doing a great job, you know, just just that close again. So uh, we can keep doing this. We'll be in good shape. You came in the points leader. You'll leave the points leader. Is that a net positive in terms of the weekend? Uh, yeah, especially if we gained on them, you know, if we extended it, it's always good. It's a lot of points at the end of the regular season to get that, a lot of, a lot of bonus points. So uh, we'll take all we can. Um, I was disappointed not to get the stage win there. We had it kind of wrapped up till that uh, tire got away on the 45. But, you know, that's, uh, that's how these things play out. We just weren't quite good enough to be able to take the lead. Um, and that was our issue, just um, burning the rear tires off too much, getting too loose in the long runs. There you go, Martin Trex Jr. He winds up second, Denny Hamlin third. DJ, I could make an argument. I know Ross Chastain's one in victory lane right now, but the Toyotas have been the organization that have really shown up, especially Joe Gibbs Racing, here in the last month and a half, really, with the speed. Uh, there's no doubt that they, you know, they had good driving cars, but didn't have quite the speed that Chevrolet's had at the beginning of this year. But they have have flipped that, and I don't know exactly if it's just some changes they have made, uh, but but certainly Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, but but you can give the, you know, 2311 that that. They have speed with, with their Toyotas, too. So they've done a really good job with that. And uh, they're, they're going to be factors pretty good. There's nowhere now, uh, at, especially after we saw them on the road courses where they struggled mightily last year, how they're performing this year, there's nowhere they can't go and be a factor in these races. Yeah, Toyota seems to be the only team that gets a look at a win every week. Every week in the Joe Gibbs organization, JGR seems to, to get that look uh, every week. I am going to say this, and I agree with Denny. I think Denny had a solid third-place car. And if true could have gotten out front that one time he may could have stretched it far enough that it would have taken Ross a little bit longer to catch up so uh, you know, it, it, he just needed that clean racetrack like Truex said. Yes yeah. it's a pretty good time DJ to heat up as well just nine races left until the playoffs so yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the Toyotas will take that speed They'll right take now. that yeah and you, you always want the trophy you know but Martin Truex extended his regular season points yes, lead he did. and Denny Hamlin got another playoff point to add to his list so they both have something to take home with them. True. No doubt about it the Toyota's doing some good stuff but who did the best tonight Ross Chastain and Trackhouse Racing in victory lane at their hometown track in Nashville going to celebrate with a little guitar more to come on NBC from Nashville Super Speedway NASCAR America post race show is brought to you by Progressive save when you bundle auto home or motorcycle insurance Visit Progressive.com. Boy, what a fun night in Nashville Super Speedway. A sold-out crowd got to witness Ross Chastain go to victory lane for the first time in 2023. But the guys who got to call it, Rick, Steve, Jeff, and Junior, man, that was a fun race, wasn't it? Yeah, so much fun. And you guys mentioned it. The Toyotas really dominated. There were three cars. Between the three of them, they led 164 laps. Ultimately, you know, with Ross out front leading 99 laps and the most important one, the last one. But it was a dominant performance by three guys and Ross. Well, and it was a 108-lap green flag run to the finish. I mean, that's a long, long run with a lot of opportunity to make mistakes. And Truex, while he wasn't able to get that track position, he never really let Ross out of his sight. So Ross could see him in the mirror the whole time working traffic. It was an impressive run and, and a different feel out of Ross. He was yep. the same aggressive Ross when he needed to be, but no controversy. A clean race for the one car. Yeah, you know, Ross, Ross mentioned the you know, everybody being critical of him or some people being critical of him. You know, to start the year, he had nine straight incidents his own track. And he had everybody kind of upset at him. His car owner, Justin Marks, came out and said, hey, he needs to do some work. And and we all thought, a lot of people thought, oh, no, we've slowed him down. We saw tonight he hasn't slowed him down. And, I, you know, what I, I've been critical of Ross about being in so much incidents. What we saw tonight was just simple, fast Ross. Just Ross was faster. He just went out there and out drove guys, took advantage of the speed in his car. That's the kind of Ross 
Charles Chastain that can win championships. And at this racetrack, Toyota has dominated. They just have not gotten the checkered flag. Three races and three Chevrolets have came in here and gotten to take that guitar home. But how about the racing that we've seen at Nashville Super Speedway? I can't name a track on the series that races this well. We saw restarts where cars went three wide for two, three laps. Double file racing throughout the field. Just some of the best racing I've seen in a long time. Looking forward to next week at Chicago. That's going to be exciting as well. But we had a good one tonight. Yeah, Junior, let's actually recap this one. Let's take another look at how we got to Ross Chastain in victory lane. Well, right here you see it. Ross started on the front row, started on the pole. We knew he had speed. That car to the outside, the 45 of Tyler Reddick. I thought that was going to be his main, uh, basically, competition all night long. Reddick looked good, but he wasn't able to get it through the entire day. The racing was amazing, though, guys. It was here. Tyler Reddick did have a fast race car. Won the stage. They go to stage two. Ross, here he is. See his car wiggling around, moving around. Right rear tire comes off the car after he's on pit road. Caution comes out. This ends his day. Comes down pit road. Three tires. In the restart, we had a big crash. Watch that 12 car down there on the inside. Ryan Blaney off the brakes right here, trying to straighten it out hard into the inside wall. Shook him up just a little bit. Glad to see him get out. Talk to reporters. He's frustrated. They thought they were having a good race going. That hard hit the inside wall will end it. Yeah, Blaney said after the infield care center, the hardest hit of his career. You see right there, Denny Hamlin barely beats his teammate to the end of stage two. And then this is really when it all changed, right? Ross Chastain found something. The lights came on. The sun went down. He was able to get by the 11 and then kept the lead through green flag pit stops, through lap traffic, 108 laps. Like I said earlier, that's a long run. The, two, the team did what they needed, kept that track position. Yeah, great job by Ross getting on and off pit road and great job by that pit crew. They've been strong all year. Here, he is. Here you see Truex, he stayed. He pitted a lap earlier, trying to get around to get in front of Ross, but Cannot do it. Chastain and that team had a better stop. Chastain through the middle of this lap traffic. And this right here was sort of the point where he was able to put a little distance between him and Truex. Three lap cars between him and Truex. And then this is sort of where the gap stayed for the rest of the run. Truex complaining about losing the right rear tire. Ross drives to victory. His first at a true oval. Remember, he's won races at the plate tracks. He's won on the road courses. He's so happy to win on an oval and at Nashville, sort of the home base for track house. I'm sure Justin Marks is happy about this. Well, we know Ross is happy about it. Plenty more NASCAR America post-race show presented by Progressive as the celebrations will continue. That Gibson Les Paul guitar in the hands of Ross Chastain and the winner sticker. He's in the playoffs. Back in Nashville, Tennessee, yeah, the Tennessee State flag flying high in victory lane because their hometown team has won and put themselves in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs in 2023. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch what Ross Chastain can do. Nice night for Chase Elliott. Started 14th, finished fourth earlier. He caught up with Dave Burns. Fourth today for Chase Elliott. And Chase, at times the car looked like it had it, and then at times it didn't. And at the end, just outside the top three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, proud of our of our Napa team there for getting a top five. That's you know that's a solid night. So uh, happy about that. Obviously, wish we could have had a little bit more, but you know to get two top fives in a row is is the kind of cadence we need to we need to get into to try to win one of these things. So um, yeah, you know I, I thought I thought we were the best at the at the start of the race and was just trying to get up through the traffic and. And then I think we fell off a little bit through the mid-stage. Um, and then I think we just kind of got back to where we were and everyone else was a little better there there at the end. So, yeah, but look, we were uh, closer than we've been. So that's uh, that's encouraging. Well, and with that in mind, I mean, you know how these days go. You're kind of thinking there might be a late caution there for you to get a chance on a restart? I almost was the caution. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if y'all caught that or not, but... Um, 
I all but, I mean, I did wreck, and whoever was outside of me basically saved me from, from going around. So I about, I about threw it in the trash. <laughs> they were coming to, the, coming to the white. So glad that we held on to it. And, um, yeah, we'll go up to Chicago and, and try, to, try to keep building on it. And that's a wild card you could win because no one knows what's going to happen. As you look forward to the next nine, is there anything that sticks out in your mind about how you can get that win? Because the points deficit is large. The win would be the way to get in. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, if you're if you're not contending for wins, it, it, the final ten doesn't matter anyway. So, um, I mean, that, that's just the facts of, of how, what it takes to run consistently up front to make a late, late charge in the point. So um, we have to have runs like this every week you know other guys are doing it so it's certainly possible so yeah we just got to keep going where we're where we're headed and and uh keep putting ourselves in the top five and and keep inching away and i think we'll be fine thanks chase up front and had a shot so dave that question was perfect because that's the question right now for chase elliott dj <laughs> is there a points path now i gotta admit jeff burton and i had an argument about that this week i say there is a points path for Chase Elliott to the playoffs. I mean, he gained 20 points tonight. Burton said, no way, he has to win. What do you say? I, I'm, I'm going to be realistic and say, yes, there, there is that point that he could do that. Uh, most of the time, he would have to finish inside the top five and get a lot of stage points, I think, to, to make this really happen. Like you which did tonight. he can do. Uh, the the problem is going to come if we get more winners, then that gap yes. mm. continues to get larger uh, getting to that, that spot. Uh, and... Don't have to look any further yeah. than next week at Chicago and see what may happen there. <laughs> yeah, right. Not that any of us have any yeah. idea, but we have to think that, you know, someone, a road racer with any kind of experience on, on a type of on a street course, A.J. Allmendinger, Michael McDowell comes yes. to mind that that's really good with that. So that, that potential, that makes it even more difficult if we get multiple winners uh, that haven't won so far. Yeah, I think if we were shooting at a static target, I would say yes, that he could probably right. point yeah. his way in. But it's not a static target. Uh, we saw that tonight night. Ross Chastain wins. It moves that line. So I, I think when you look at it, uh, if he has nights like tonight, even if the line moves a little bit, he was sixth, seventh, and fourth. And stage six and, and stage one. So he's racing against guys like Eric Jones, who was 10th in stage one and eighth at the end of the race. So, yeah, you're going to gain points. You're going to gain points on that group that you're racing with. But you've got to have those consistent nights or those consistent races like that where you're in the points in stage one, stage two, and stage three. And this is one of the first nights we've seen this out of the nine car where they've been able to complete it. I want to jump back to the point that Chase made when Dave asked him that question because Alan Gustafson told me the same thing, Kyle, standing on pit road today. Yes, there's a points path, probably, but we have to win because yeah. you've got to win in the playoffs. So if we're not winning now, we don't need to be yeah. in the playoffs anyway. You that's agree with fact. that? That's a fact. Listen, how many times do we talk about the bubble? The bubble, the bubble, the bubble. And as soon as we get in the playoffs, the first four out of the bubble, are guys who just pointed their way in and hadn't won anything anyhow. You go back to the sharp end of the stick and the guys that are the best teams and the guys that contend for wins each week, and th those are the guys that are going to win a championship. Yeah, you're right. And uh, it, this was his best race since he's returned yes. mm -hmm. uh, from the injury and then the suspense. So it, it was that's a positive for them, and they have to keep moving forward uh, to, to do that. But, you know, I think we've got a guy waiting that yeah. maybe uh, <laughs> outside everybody yes. else. So uh, I think that's enough. Yep, Chase Elliott, it, he's got to go do what Ross Chastain did tonight. That's exactly Get a win, yeah. and then exactly. you don't have to be talking about that. Exactly right. Coming up in a little bit, we will have Ross Chastain. But before we we get there after the race. Kyle Larson caught up with Kim Kuhn. And the five car of Kyle Larson comes home in the fifth position. So describe your night. What were you battling out there? Um, we were just uh, pretty, pretty off. I feel like on the short runs, you know, every restart I would fall back and then you kind of just maintain until the green flag stop. And then we would always have a good green flag cycle and could pass some cars. And for whatever reason, we were decent, you know, on those runs. So you know, it worked out that the last run was really long and we got a green flag stop and you know, leapfrog some guys and uh, then had a decent enough car to pass a couple more and, and somehow finish fifth. I mean, that's as high, ups, high up as I was all day and was honestly surprised when I looked at the scoreboard to see, you know, where we were at and we were, you know, battling for the top five with the 24. So, um, you know, all in all, good finish. Just, uh, we just haven't had the speed here the last few races, but our team has been doing a phenomenal job getting the most out of our days, you know, at least getting the mo the best finish out, out of the day possible. So um, obviously we'd like to be better throughout the whole race. We could get more stage points, 
Um, but, you know, we just got to get our cars a little bit better, and, and I think that all come with it. How much did the track change over the course of the evening? Yeah, it, uh, yeah I think it changed slightly. I think that... I don't know if the balance of the track changed much, but I think the pace got a little faster there as the sun went down. Um, it seemed like the longer runs, you know, get kind of greasy, slick feeling as the rubber laid down, as it always does on concrete surfaces. Um, and you can move move around, find some grip in other areas, but you also have to be cautious of not overworking your right rear tires. So um, I think that's an area where I got a little bit better at the end, was just uh, not abusing my stuff so early on in the run, like maybe I was early just trying to hold on because I was slow. Kyle Larson, top five finish here at Nashville. Seabell, seventh today, ran in the top five mid-race and all the way from 20th. You worked hard today. Yeah, it was uh, a, a pretty solid day and something that we can definitely build off of. You know, we had a great start to the season and then uh, a, a terrible stretch of races the last couple months. So between Sonoma and here, it seems like we're getting it turned around a little bit. And, uh, yeah, pretty good showing for the DeWalt camera today. It's kind of one of those obvious things. Passing cars was something that you proved you could do today. So how much confidence does that give you going into the next few races and the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, Nashville is a place where, uh, and especially today, the long green flag runs. If you were better than the guys, you could move around and make passes. So, you know, at the end, I felt like, uh, you know, the, the last stage going green, it shook out pretty much how, how it was going to. The good cars ended up up front, and, you know, it's kind of a fifth to tenth place guy all day. Is there a missing ingredient you're looking for? Uh, well, we had it early on in the year, and it uh, kind of got away from us a little bit. So um, I think we'll be able to find it. All right, good luck going forward. We're talking about a driver that needed a good run. Christopher Bell winds up seventh today, as Dave mentioned. But the guy who won, Ross Chastain, has joined us on the Peacock Pit Box. Man, I've, I I love the celebration. You know, the question's coming in, and Kyle brought up a terrific point a moment ago, Ross. Everybody wondered, is the old Ross Chastain going to show up? The guy who's aggressive, the guy who runs up front. And Kyle said, yes, we saw the old Ross Chastain, but we saw a new yes. Ross Chastain tonight. Do you agree a more calculated Ross Chastain won this race? Oh, I'm always going to evolve, Marty, and that's that's human nature. We're going to do that. So um, as I've looked and reflected on the last, you know, month or six weeks, um, you know, I didn't just get here overnight. So I'd look further back and, and just trust my tools. And tonight uh, we had a great car, obviously showed it qualifying. To qualify on the pole, I'm not normally that good <laughs> uh, at doing that. And I tied together two incredible laps that I will truly remember for the rest of my life, that second round lap in qualifying. And then in the race, when the sun was out, I was sideways off turn two, um, really slick. And then as the sun went down, turn four, it gripped up a little more than turn two. And I thought, okay, okay, come on, come <laughs> on. And I told Phil, I was like, I'm sl sliding off turn two, but turn four is good. And he's like, okay, it's good to know. And as soon as the sun went down, it was like a light switch. And that car came to life for World, our World Ride Express Chevy. Uh, to supercharge that car like that was incredible. Yeah, and, and, and we, were, we were talking about it before, obviously, before you came on. And, and I, what I meant by what I said was the way you approach traffic. We watched you work traffic today. You didn't just run up on them and say, oh, now what am I going to do with it? And, and the one example was Truex is coming. And you can't get away from Eric Almarola. You cannot get away. Y'all are a magnet. Y'all are on each other. And you split them. You pay, you, you're patient enough. How much patience did it take in that situation? Because he was coming at that time. Yeah, look, uh, Eric and, and his man upstairs on the spotter stand, they, they got it out for me. And, and they're open about it. And, like, when we come up to lap them at Dover and here, it's like, they're going to run me all over the track. And so I took a risky move. I, I felt like that was very high risk, um, but it was worth the reward yeah. to get that clean air. Um, so I had been very patient behind Eric, trying to outwrap him, like McReynolds was saying on the on the stand all day, or trying to just roll around him. Yeah. And um, when, the, when I saw them side by side, I thought if the middle opens, I'm... And it opened right as I was thinking it. Yeah. And I just thought, just get there. And then Eric gave it to me. Yeah. You know, he was nice enough to do it. Yeah. So after a performance like this, I, I know you came into the year after a tremendous season last year, having an opportunity to win a championship last year, coming in thinking, okay, we're definitely going to be that good, if not better. Uh, but you couldn't get a win until this point. It took 17 races, 17 weeks to, to get to that point. You're still thinking, I'm sure, before that you were a championship caliber team, but does this kind of talk about flipping a switch? Uh, you're obviously in the playoffs now, but uh, championship caliber? 
I have no idea. Look, <laughs> I am figuring this yeah. stuff out as I go. <laughs> I have been here since 2011 in the truck series, and Kentucky was my third race ever, which is very similar. And when I sit here, I think of Kentucky. Um, and to now, like, to come here and win this many years later, um, I have no idea what that means for the future. I know that we've not quit preparing to win. We've not quit preparing to succeed. Um, we trust our process. Uh, look, Trackhouse, it's built on the foundation of 140 people. It's pretty sm smaller, I guess, if you compare it to the other guys and girls we're racing against, but, um, you know, to... I know that I've got that many people going to battle for me every week, uh, and with GM and Chevrolet and ECR engines, we we, we trust our processes. Yeah. yeah listen, I want to. As soon as Marty interviewed you when you got out of the car, the, no matter what the question was, you addressed the criticism, and, and I want to go there. What does this win mean for the team? Because you hear the criticism, but that team hears the criticism. Justin Marks hears the criticism. What does a win like this do for? this organization because you've won on a road course you've won on a super speedway now you take out the mid-range tracks you can win anywhere anytime but what does this do well david farrow my car chief he's he's all about positive affirmations and and surrounding ourselves in our minds with with the good that we can do so we like he he's rubbed off on me in in incredible ways and he's his own person and i take a i take a, a sliver of what he believes in and i take that for myself and i go about my business and i prepare um but look when mr hendrick criticizes publicly it's tough <laughs> i mean sure. he is yeah, he is, is the guy that everybody knows and he, they know that that he you know if what he says goes he he deserves that um uh, but i took that and he said you're going to win again ross like you're you're going to you're going to keep competing just do a little better don't crash my cars please so um <laughs> you know it's uh it's incredible to lead the to lead the way for chevrolet and gm tonight uh it was it was a but great the fans night. were going crazy yeah they were you. yeah they were i don't man. know how much you heard of it but yeah. this i could sold out place was going crazy when yeah. you won i still had my helmet on and my sound gear earplugs but i could hear them <laughs> <laughs> congratulations congratulations yeah, on yeah, the win congrats sure. on being in the playoffs as well we'll see yeah. you next week in chicago hey if y'all could have came a little earlier we could have won like 17 weeks ago <laughs> i know i know it's all us, right? No. Hey, we're Thanks, here till 11. We'll talk about <laughs> Chicago, the downtown streets. That's coming up next Sunday. We'll talk that next. NASCAR America Post Race is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. DJ, let's take a look at uh, this week's progressive safe driver. Any other choice in Ross Chastain? No, no. Yep, Kyle Petty had the perfect words. We saw a different Ross Chastain, very calculating tonight, making moves, whether it was for the lead there, passing Denny Hamlin. They did a great job on that last pit stop, getting him out to where he just had to manage things. But, you know, he did a great job with the traffic, and what it got him was a checkered flag and a spot in the playoffs. Yes, indeed. He will be a part of the playoffs coming up later this fall. And he smashes the watermelon. After the race, Kim Coon caught up with William Byron. Sixth place finished for William Byron. For you and your team in this day, did you feel like you maximized it? Um, maybe a couple spots, you know, here and there. I think, I think honestly, we we had a decent balance in stage one when the sun was out, and then. Um, okay through the middle portion of the race just not a lot of speed um to catch those guys i felt like rolling the center was just our weakness kind of rolling into one and um just get eight up on restarts being able to roll into one so liberty university chevy was decent all night the guys worked really hard and uh just that last run we needed a little bit more but um good to home, come home six you know be kind of somewhat disappointed with that but um yeah we'll, we'll go to work uh for next week in chicago and try to get a little bit better um you know and see what we can improve thought the weekend was solid as a whole in general as we hit this summer stretch what specifically can you guys improve on uh, i think just um just a little bit of roll speed i feel like i feel like we're a little bit down on roll speed and then we kind of free up the extremities so um just need a little bit more speed entry to the middle i think and uh try to put that all together so i think 
our honestly our car in stage one was pretty well balanced you know it's just it's just a matter of trying to make that a little bit better and finally still second in points to martin trex jr is that something at this point you're paying attention to with nine races to go in the regular season uh we just got to keep running better so we're running good but we just got to keep keep up with it those guys are um running really well too so not really worried about the points just trying to focus on each week and try to just improve our average running position a little bit Second in points, Kim, but as of now, the number one seed with 22 playoff points, William Byron, and everybody goes to Chicago next week. Boy, KP, that's going to be a fun weekend. It starts Saturday on USA, and then we move to the Cup Series race, the first ever street course race in downtown Chicago. Listen, everybody's been talking about it. We've been hashing it out. We've been arguing. I'm ready for it, man. Uh, we'll be doing it radio style, by the way, and uh, you saw the big scissors lift. The guys will be oh, on yeah, next yes. week. That's going to be a lot of fun, but look at the street names you know, Lakeshore Drive, Columbus, Michigan, they'll all be part of what's going to happen there. Mike Bagley from MRN and Sirius XM NASCAR Radio will join us. Dale Earnhardt Jr. over in turn four and Jeff Burton calling him in turn 11 off of Michigan Avenue. That's where the calamity is going to be. And Rick and Steve will be in the booth right at the start finish line. By the way, we'll be over there. Yep, Peacock, right behind right the fountain Buckingham there. Fountain. Oh, I man. cannot wait for our spot, by the way, DJ. It's going to be outstanding. Incredible. Parker yes. with those live shots today. Most really cool to see that. So I'll ask you the question every driver has been asked in the media center this week. What do we expect in the race? We have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they said? Yes. No, yes. They said yes, chaos. They, said. they all said okay. chaos. Yeah. 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 This is the first time in a long time that, that we're going to have a race that we really don't know what yeah. to expect. You know, we can say that about Daytona and Talladega, but you kind of know what to expect. Yeah. You know, you talk about chaos. We know that there. But these guys have no idea what to expect because they've never been on a course like this, you can talk about, yeah, it's still road racing, but it's totally different than any type of road racing uh, because the track surfaces are different. You're going to have concrete to asphalt, asphalt to concrete, um, and not knowing exactly where it is that you can make these passes and, and how much can you push the issue, Kyle. Yeah, and, and listen, I, I don't know what's going to go on on the racetrack. All I know is it's going to be a huge event. Oh, it man. is going to yeah. be the, one of the biggest things to happen in NASCAR in a 75-year history. I don't care. My dad's even excited about <laughs> Chicago, and he doesn't get excited about anything because this is a new avenue for us. This is a new avenue yeah. for the sport to go and do something that we've never done before, that the sport has never done. You didn't get a chance to do it. I didn't get no. a chance. My dad didn't get a chance to do it. His dad didn't get a chance to do it in this sport. But these drivers are taking the sport of NASCAR to the city of Chicago, and it is going to be huge. The fans have already won. NBC is winning. I, I will say that. <laughs> We're winning. And I think in the history of the sport, when we look back, this is going to be uh, uh, at one of those moments that you look at as a turning point in the sport. When the sport headed in a different direction, and it's because of the vision that NASCAR had to be able to step out of the box and step out of that comfort zone, I'm really excited about just the total event with the music, with the drivers, yeah. with everything. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the music. The word of the week is not only going to be uh, atmosphere, it's going to be yes. party as well. Miranda Lambert, chain smokers are going to be there. This, I mean, why, why do y'all leave out Charlie Crockett, man? Because Char yeah, no, I want wait, you to mention wait, Charlie you Crockett. Him. You're going to love him, man. I, I know. Love I want guy. you to mention that guy. Can we go straight from Nashville to Chicago? I think yes, that's how excited we are to get there. I think the racing is going to be incredible and the atmosphere with all the fans who will be able to see it downtown is going to be a lot of fun. But Nashville certainly delivered three wide racing for the lead. For like five straight laps, it was incredible. But at the end of the day, it was Ross Chastain who gets his first win of 2023, puts all the talk behind him. Now he is in the 2023 Cup Series playoffs with an incredible run, dominant even at the very end. More NASCAR coverage on NBCSports.com, your local news up next.